safely away from the building. Our staff will provide direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room into the hallway where we will all remain until it is safe to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, if there is an accessible escape path, please run and try to evacuate the premises. If you can't evacuate, please find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found and lock any doors that you can. And as a last resort, and only if your life is in imminent danger, please fight. Our staff will provide additional direction and assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. Maybe we have a moment of silence in memory of Mr. Clarence Brother Real. Eternal God, our Father, we give thanks for another day. Thank you for changing up the temperature, but never change our minds to do the wrong thing for our citizens. We pray that you will bless us and keep us and guide us and direct us that we will make the right decision to make our county a better place in which to live. Bless us as we serve through Christ our Lord, we do pray. Amen. 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 In the agenda package, we have the minutes of the previous meeting. There are no additional directions to the motion. So moved. Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by both sign aye. Aye. All opposed? There is not a best on A public hearing is called to order relative to order relative to the proposed schedule standards and rules to be used in the 2024 real phase of real property at Edge Point County. Mr. Peters, would you please read the proposed schedule? Yes, sir. The proposed schedule standards and rules to be used in the 2024 reappraisal of real property in Edgecombe County have been presented to the Board of Commissioners. A copy of the schedule has been placed in the Office of the County Manager and the Office of the Tax Inspector, where they will remain available for public inspection. A public hearing on the proposed schedule of standards and rules will be held by the Board of County Commissioners at their regularly scheduled meeting on Monday, October 2nd, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Johnson Felt Commissioner's Room of the Administrative Building 201 St. Andrew Street, Carter, North Carolina, 37886. Teresa M. Lewis, Edgecombe County Tax Administrator. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So as you know, it was presented for your consideration and review at your last meeting, the new schedule of values. Uh, we're in the revaluation process. So now we have to uh, give the opportunity for our citizens to respond to the schedule of values, uh, hence the public hearing tonight. Um, ask Ms. Uh, Teresa Lewis, our tax administrator, if there's anything she, got a crowd tonight, there she is. Anything you need to add to that? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Are there any, I'd uh, like to call for public comment from the public at this time. If anybody would like to speak during this public hearing, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Is there anybody to speak? Hearing none, I'd like, I'd like to join the public hearing. What is it? Right. No, actually, I'd like to join the public hearing. Item number two, a public hearing is called to all to receive citizen input regarding a regional request for property located on Colonial Road, Harborough, from AR 30 to R 20. The public hearing is called to order. Mr. Peters, would you please read the public hearing? Yes, sir. The public notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the Board of Commissioners of Edgecombe County on Monday, October 2nd, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Johnson Felton Commissioner's Room, 2nd floor, County Administrative Building 201, St. Andrews Street, Caldwell, North Carolina, to consider and act on a re request to rezone property owned by Meadowbrook Properties, LLC, located on Colonial Road, Caldwell, also identified as parcel number 4726689662 the applicant sees his daughter's request to rezone property from AR-30 in rural residential to R-20 mixed residential district. Copies of proposed zoning map amendment are available for public inspection during business hours 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the County Planning Office Room 205, County Administrative Building 201, St. Andrew Street, Auburn, North Carolina. All parties and interest in all interested residents are invited and urged to be present in making these known. This is 20th day of September 2023 by order of the Board of Commissioners of Edgecombe County. 
Thank you, Linda. I call for the board. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to call for Ms. Katina Braswell, our planning director, to give staff report on this matter. Good evening. Case number 23, RZ02. Mr. C.B. Daltrich is on parcel from AR30 to R20. The property is located at Colonial Road near US 258 South Intersection. Parcel number 472-668. 9662.00. Acreage is approximately 10.6 acres. The property is zoned AR30, rural residential. All adjacent properties are also zoned AR30. Mr. C.B. Daltridge requests to rezone property from AR30, rural residential. R20 is consistent with Edgecombe County's adopted policy guidance as expressed in the 2014 Comprehensive Plan based on that is consistent with future land use category set for the subject parcel. After the conclusion of a legislative public hearing, the Board of Commissioners shall decide the conventional rezoning application in accordance with the standards in Section 237H review criteria. The decision shall be one of the following, approval of the application, denial of the application, approval of a revised application, or remand of the application to county staff for further consideration. The decision shall be based on the le legislative discretion of the Board of Commissioners, taking into consideration the recommendation of the Planning Board and the standards in Section 237H review criteria. In making its decision, the Board of Commissioners shall adopt a written statement of reasonableness and consistency with the county's adopted policy guidance in accordance with Section 160D-605 of North Carolina's General Statutes. At this time, I'd like to call for public comment. You see, anybody here to speak on this uh, public comment? Is there anybody to speak? If there are none, I'd like to resign the public hearing. And the recommendation on the plan board in consideration of the Do I get a motion? That needs to be a motion to approve the application. Yeah, well, if that's what the motion is. There's a motion to approve the application. Yes. Thank you. Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. <laughs> yes, sir. A public hearing is called to order to receive citizen input regarding a rezoning request for property located at um, 12,125 U.S. 64 Alternate West Rocket Mount from AR 30 to B2. The public hearing is called to order. Mr. Peters, would you please read the public notice? Yes, sir. Public notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the Board of Commissioners of Edgecombe County on Monday, October 2nd, 2023, at 7 o'clock p.m. in the John Felton Commission's room, second floor, County Administrative Building, 201 St. Andrew Street, Tolbert, North Carolina, to consider and act upon a request to rezone property owned by Donna Matthews and Elizabeth Dwell located at 12615 U.S. 64 Alternate West, Rocky Mount, also identified as parcel number 3870-701481-00. The applicant requests to rezone property from AR30 rural residential slash R30 single family residential to B2 general business district. Copies of the proposed zoning map amendment are available for public inspection during business hours 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the County Planning Office on 205 County Administrative Building 201 St. Andrew Street, Harlem, North Carolina. All parties and interest and all interested residents are invited to notice to be present and make their views known. This is the 20th day of September 2023. By order of the Board of Commissioners of Edgecombe County, I'm going to go to the board. Ms. Edwards. Again, Mr. Chairman, I call on Ms. Braswell to give the staff report. Case number 23, 
RZ01. Applicants request to rezone parcel from AR30, R30 to B2. Applicants are Donna Matthews and Elizabeth Hill. The property is located at 12615 US 64 Alternate West, Rocky Mount. Parcel number 3870-701-48100. The property consists of approximately 5.7 acres. Uh, property is owned AR30 rural residential, R30 single family residential. All adjacent properties are also zoned AR30, R30. Ms. Donna Matthews and Ms. Elizabeth Hill request to rezone property from AR30 rural residential, R30 single family residential to B2 general business district. The purpose of the request is to allow for commercial use at the above referenced property. Applicants plan to sell property for establishment of a commercial business. The principal use must meet zoning requirements in the B2 zoning district per Unified Development Ordinance Table 4.2.1 Principal Use Table. The Planning Board voted unanimously to forward the rezoning request to the Board of County Commissioners with a favorable recommendation. The Planning Board stated the rezoning from AR30 R30 to B2 is consistent with Edgecombe County's adopted policy guidance as expressed in the 2014 Comprehensive Plan based on that it is consistent with the future land use category set for the subject parcel. Right, right After the conclusion of a public hearing, the Board of Commissioners shall decide the conventional rezoning application in accordance with the sections in standard uh, standards in Section 237H Review Criteria. The decision shall be one of the following, approval of the application, denial of the application, approval of a revised application, or remand of the application to county staff for further consideration. The decision shall be based on the legislative discretion of the Board of Commissioners, taking into consideration recommendation of the Planning Board and the standards in Section 237H Review Criteria. In making its decisions, the Board of Commissioners shall adopt a written statement of reasonableness and consistency with the county's adopted policy guidance in accordance with Section 160D-605 of the North Carolina General Statutes. At this time, I'd like to call for public comments during this public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak? Is there anybody here to speak? Hearing none, I'd like to run the public hearing. Consideration is for approval of this request. Is there a motion? I would make a motion for approval of this request. Second. Second. Question? All in favor, let it be no matter what, sign aye. 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 All opposed? Here and on, it is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Schedule <coughs> appointment, what's there? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first scheduled appointment, we have Ms. Tanya Heat, our corporate extension director. <laughs> Uh, who is here tonight to recognize some of our 4-H youth for their participation, and some of them have uh, won some recent state competition. Yes, good evening. Uh, I am honored to um, introduce some of our, what I call, local celebrities. So these are our youth from Edgecombe County, um, and it's fitting that we're recognizing them tonight because this is the start of our national 4-H week. So thank you for your time and effort and letting them come and um, join in this celebration. Uh, these 4-H'ers have worked very hard in their project area. Um, they have competed not only on the county level, but district and state. And then um, in the next month or so, we've got some going on to national competitions. So we've had a wonderful summer of activities. Um, I hope you'll agree we do have some awesome young people that are here with us tonight. And along with that, we have a lot of family support, and that's the reason we, we have such a successful program. I'd first like to introduce some of our presentation participants. Um, I'd like to call on Abby Bradley, if you'll come forward. And if we can do a group picture, can we have them come up and we'll get a group at the end. Abby Bradley participated this year in our pork char grill competition. Um, she won not only district gold, but also state. So we have some good grillers here. We now have Thomas Bradley. Thomas Bradley also participated in the Turkey Char Grill competition, winning both district gold and state gold uh, for his um, grilling presentation, and this will allow him to go to Louisville, Kentucky next month um, to compete. Yes, we will be um, 
doing a practice November the second. So I'll in, I'll invite y'all to that. So he'll he'll be um, practicing again. Next we have Emma Britt. I think she's on this side. Miss Emma also participated in our small and companion animals category. She won district gold and state silver. Next we have Savannah Dale. So Savannah presented at um, our district um, activity day as well as state presentation. She won district silver in the open category and she talked a lot about North Carolina facts and government. So that was great. Next we have McCray Kaiser. McCray presented at the district and state competition in his forestry um, presentation and he won district gold and state silver. Next we have Payton Kaiser. He also participated in the chicken char grill competition. He won both gold in district and state and he will next month go on to the national competition in Louisville, Kentucky. Next we have Seth Peel. He participated in the careers and entrepreneurship category and he won both district gold and state bronze. Next we have Jada Smith. Jada participated in the communication and expressive arts category. She won uh, district gold and state silver for her presentation. Next we have Jolena Sunbaum. She participated in the livestock production presentation, winning district gold and the state silver. Next, we have Logan Sunbaum. She participated in the seafood grilling um, presentation category. She won both district gold and state silver. Next, we have Faith Womble. Faith participated again in our livestock production presentation category. She won a district silver and, and also participated in our state competition. And last but not least for our presentations, we have Levi Womble. He participated again in the livestock production um, presentation category. And I always have to tell this little story, it might embarrass him. But the first time he ever gave, he was going up to give his presentation and the judges said, are you ready? He said, I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> So he did really good district gold and state gold for that. You got confidence. Yes. <laughs> so we also would like to recognize, and, and if y'all will stay, stay up there because there's a few more that we want to recognize. Um, our citizenship program, we have Jolia Knight. And as well as Jolina Sunbaum, if you'll raise your hand. Both of these girls represented Edgecombe County at a 4-H citizenship focus event this summer. In addition to that, they also competed in a very intensive application, resume, interview, essay um, competition statewide. And they won and will be going to National 4-H Congress in November in Atlanta. So kudos to them. The other thing that we would like to recognize um, are our 4-H project record book winners and portfolio. And if, it's a lot of record keeping along with 4-H. So we have McCray Kaiser, Peyton Kaiser, if you will, just raise your hand, Abby Bradley and Thomas Bradley. A lot of those got district gold and state silver in, some of, in one or two categories um, statewide. So <coughs> good job with that. And for the 4-H portfolio, this is a three-year project. We have Peyton Kaiser was recognized at 4-H Congress this summer. He won district and state gold for his forestry and natural resources portfolio. So great job. With that, um, a lot of their work also goes into their scholarship. So a lot of the record keeping that they're doing helps on um, scholarship applications as well as college. And we'd like to recognize Peyton Kaiser, who received a $1,000 scholarship for the Edgecombe County 4-H Livestock. As well as, yeah, that's good. <laughs> And Jolena Sunbaum was recognized. She received a um, Rachel Thomas and Dr. Thomas 4-H Foods and Nutrition for $2,500 in addition to a, a showmanship circuit of an additional $500. So good job for her. The one thing about these two that I'll say, both Peyton and Jolena, they were honored this summer at 4-H Congress, um, and they were inducted into the North Carolina 4-H Honor Club. That is the highest honor any 4-H can receive in North Carolina. 
So good job to that. And I'll leave you with this. We're all trying to build youth and their capacities and life skills into leaders and you single leaders here. Um, but I would like to highlight Logan Sunbaum. She is one of our officers for the Northeast District. So good job, Logan. They are learning how to campaign and talk to people about voting. So they have learned a lot about that. So Logan is our district officer. And Jolena Sunbaum, she's wearing the infamous green jacket. She is representing the state 4-H. She is our president this year. It comes from Edgecombe County. Okay. And I'm not sure about our history, but I would say this one was probably our last Edgecombe um, vice president for the state. So we've got another one right here. And just thank you all to not only the, the 4-Hers that are here, but the parents and the volunteers to make this program happen. And thank you for your time and effort tonight. Thank you. Well, let's, let's give all the members a call. Please, come on. Sometimes this is, these are good things that are going on in our county that sometimes the public does not see until such time as we make it aware of it. Thank you so, so much for that. And we see you as future young people that we see here. And make it a policy decision for the rest of the county. Uh, for some of us, more than we hope. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So if he's right in the middle, if y'all could part to see there a little bit, in the, so we won't get that emblem on your face, it'd be nice in the picture. I'd say. <laughs> you get everybody. Everybody, with this way and smile. Any comments from the board? Um, the next
I scheduled an appointment uh, tonight is, is regarding, as you know, at your last meeting, your last regular meeting, uh, at your last regular meeting, we had a, a number of citizens to come with some concerns and complaints about uh, our non-emergency medical transportation. And, uh, you know, certainly those, you know, their concerns for them, certainly concerns for us. And so we wanted to provide some follow-up to that tonight if we could. Um, and if you want. And so just to sort of lay the foundation, uh, and then Ms. Battle, uh, Ms. Betty Battle, our DSS director, is going to come with some information. We also have with us tonight Mr. Todd Gardner, uh, the director of Car River Transit is going to come and talk uh, as well. But as you know, um, we have uh, Medicaid provides transportation for medical related uh, needs. And it's a service that we provide through outside contractors. Car River Transit, which is the regional transportation provider for us as well as many other entities, uh, is the primary provider of that service for us. Um, we also have a secondary contract, uh, we have had a secondary contract uh, to provide, to supplement that service. Um, our procurement policy and procedures requires that at times that we go out to seek other proposals. Uh, we did that uh, here relatively recently based on a rating system. Uh, we went with a new contract. Ms. Battle is going to talk a little bit about that process. Um, admittedly, there, that transition from, from one contract to another inevitably can, can be a little bumpy in the transition. And we've seen that in this case as well. And so our goal has been to, as best as we can, for our staff to work with both Harvard Transit and our new secondary provider, and the name of that company is Flowvire. Um, to smooth out that transition as, as best as, as we can. Um, ultimately, the, the goal is to make these options available to our citizens who are eligible to get this service. Um, the options for someone who's on Medicaid, if they need assistance with, uh, with transportation, um, through us, Edgecombe County right now is Car River Transit, uh, the new company which is called Flowby. A third option is a person can get a family member or friend or other relative to take them on uh, to their appointment and they can get reimbursed for the mileage based on the, uh, the IRS mileage rate. So really there are three options um, uh, for, for that service. And so I just want, again, wanted to uh, lay the foundation uh, in, in response to concerns that were brought forth last month. And I want to call forward first uh, Ms. Betty Battle, who's our DSS director, um, and she's going to give an overview of, of the process that our team went through in selecting a new provider, as well as other information they want to share. Good evening. So, um, Eric had asked me to come before the board this evening to discuss our um, bid process when we bid out when we bid it out, the um, non-emergency Medicaid transportation. And so I was just going to walk you all from the beginning of that process to the end. So on May the 30th is when we put the um, RFP in the newspapers. It was in the Rocky Mount Telegram and the Daily Reflector on May the 30th. The ads ran on June the 3rd, the 6th, and the 7th and 8th of June. The cutoff date for the RFPs were June the 16th. And um, on May 31st, the RFP was posted on the Edgecombe County website with the same cutoff date, <clears throat> June 16, 2023. Um, the first two weeks of June, we received RFP, RFPs from five providers. Um, <clears throat> on June the 20th, it's when I received notification from the staff person that was receiving the RFPs. Uh, we had in the newspaper to turn them in to this individual, and they did. 
And so I got an email from her on the 26th saying, hey, they're all in. <clears throat> when can we meet? And we met on um, June the 26th that we did the bid opening. Well, we had two staff people present at the bid opening. One opened the bids and one recorded the meeting. We also reviewed on that day the county's evaluation criteria form, which is what we use to rate or what they use to rate the providers based on um, <clears throat> the information that was submitted, if everything was submitted that was requested, um, the timeliness of the documents, and just what their um, scope of duties were. So we met on June the 29th to go over the ratings and um, they were provided uh, awarded points for qualifications, experience, costs, and understanding and approach. And when we looked at the understanding and approach, we looked at um, when we posted the RFPs on the website, we also posted that uh, these are the attachments that you need to submit or where you go to download those attachments. So for understanding and approach, some of them lost a lot of points because they didn't submit those documents. Um, the attachments, the required attachments were also listed in the newspapers and like I said, it was listed on the county website as well. Um, on July 24th, um, Ms. McNeil visited the agency to sign a short-term contract with us that ran from July the 1st, 2023 through August the 30th, 2023 due to the incomplete status of the fiscal year 23-24 contract. So she agreed to continue to, to serve from July 1 to August 30th, and she signed the contract. She met with one, two staff people to do that. And then on um, August the 28th, we sent out letters to the bidders notifying them that the contract was awarded to another provider. And on September the 1st, the, a contract was awarded to Flovi. And then on November, on September the 12th, we sent letters out to all of the riders, letting them know that the contract had switched from Fountain Transportation to Flowby. So that's pretty much our process. It's the process we've always used for um, bid proposals. Um, we try to keep it as clean as possible. We have one person that opened the bid, but have another person that recorded the bid, the, um, the um, findings of the bids. And then we come back and we met, we met after they did the evaluation. I was not a part of that process. Those two people went out in the different office, did the evaluation. We met a couple of days later. They explained to me how they came up with their ratings and we made the selection based on that. Any questions? Uh, okay, and, and I've already, I've talked with you about and spread my that the residents were not told about the change until after the change had happened. So it was like getting things back instead of alerting them that this was coming up. I felt like we should have always sent some letters to them when this came down. But it ended up going back to the letter because the process was already changed. But I also want to know, I saw you said it was a short term contract. So when the former Was it discussed with him that this is only short-term? According to an email that I received from the person that met with her, her email says that she met with Ms. Um, McNeil and explained to her that the contract was from July the 1st to August the 30th. And, of course, it's stated in the contract in several different places as well. Now, from your letter to the former carrier, did you explain there were any items why they did not get the contract? No. We just simply stated that the contract was awarded to another provider. And it was a, that was like a standard form letter. That The same letter went out to all the providers. So did the bid go to the lowest bid? Not necessarily, no. Is there any way that you can tell me approximately how much did the, the difference between the previous What do you mean in terms of? Did DSSA win money with, with, well, with the, the new contract? Well, DSSA doesn't have to pay any money. 
this contract is strictly um, state and federal dollar. County money is not in this contract at all. So they'll reimburse through the NC track system. There are no county dollars in this contract. However, um, even though, although cost is not the sole criteria, it is one that the state stresses that we look at very strongly. But in this situation, the ones that we looked at, it wasn't just cost. We looked at things like um, the website said, turn in all of these attachments, go to www.whatever and download them and turn them in. We looked at things like that. They didn't turn them in then. They lost points. That's what I'm saying. When you sent the letter, I think it should have been a little bit more detailed. Instead of just saying, you gave us a contract. I would like to know why did you this contract if I had the contract for two or three years? What changed is that we figured it out, which, you know, when I talked to the county manager about it, he told me that based on the, I guess, some of the findings in our um, audit, it was recommended that we start bidding out um, our, I think it was the procurement process. The procurement policy, so and so based on that, we started bidding out the contract. And so the contract was lost because it was bidded out and another provider got it. How long did the contract last? One year. Well, it was year to year before. Right. And we can make the decision. The contract gives us the opportunity to extend it to another year if we want. We'll make that decision. We have to wait to see how it goes with the contractor, um, the need. All of those factors have to come into play when making that decision. Okay. Can you tell me approximately how many of those fifty are liable in the transfers? 380. And that's total. And that's with um, Tar River and the secondary. Provided as well. So do you know the second possibility? Yeah, we um, just got that number. Well, I think it was like two something for two eighty something for Fountain, and uh, one hundred and something for Tarleva. And that can ebb and flow over a period of time. It's customer choice. So at any time, the customer can say, "I prefer to ride with Tar River Transit instead of or vice versa." So that can ebb and flow over the course or, or, or erosion. <laughs> or erosion, right. We have very few that do that, but they could. So it's, it's, it's client choice, which provider, or whether or not they go with a family member or friend, private transport, as they call that. So, so basically what I think I'm hearing you say is that the entire process is based on that information that was was or was not shared. They did not, the other people did not make the cut. Um, it actually ended up being a tie between Flovi and another company, uh -huh. but we kept calling the other company or I kept calling the other company uh -huh. and I did not get a response. So I moved ahead with Flovi. I didn't want to keep waiting because we were already beyond July. Um, but your procedure was followed. Mm -hmm. So it was actually a tie. I've never heard of Flow Five. So did you compare within their um, application? Do they have to supply you with like who they served before, or you know, is their first time and they're from county? Because I've never heard of them. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty much like family. We've never heard of them when we contacted with them back in 2020. So we had to go. So they had to. I I've never heard of them. Let me put it like that. Okay. <laughs> so when we contracted with them, this was the first time that they provided transportation services for Edgecombe County. And so with Flowby, yes, we did. We went online and we found out that they provided transportation. They also did. Um, and he can tell you better than I can what the difference is. But they are. I think they deliver medical supplies to hospitals. And so we did go on this website and we did look at them. And the information that they have to submit, the proposal, all of that information is included in the proposal as well. Any other questions, Mayor? Yes, pretty much. That 
is correct. It was listed on the Exxon County website, and I, I, I have a copy of that, and I also have a copy of the proof of the, the of ad, proof of the ad that ran in the um, Rocky Mount Telegram, the um, Tar River, and the Daily Reflector in Greenville. And it tells you, this is what, you know, this is where you know you need to go to get these um, attachments. So any specific Yes, absolutely. And did everybody meet the June 16th deadline? Yes. And, and just to add, the request for proposal document uh, describes the rating criteria that's used in number of families. Exactly what you did when you Sir, Mr. Todd Gardner with Tar River Transit is here tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as mentioned, my name is uh, Todd Gardner. I am the director of Tar River Transit. Uh, I work specifically for the city of Rocky Mount. Uh, I've been in this position now for going on about 18 years. Um, the reason, first of all, I'd like to thank Eric Evans for allowing me to come down and address the board. Uh, I realize this is a sensitive issue um, during this time, so thank you, Mr. Evans, for allowing me to come and speak on behalf of uh, Tar River Transit. Um, the main reason why I'm here is to address the concerns um, that were displayed by the citizens here in Edgecombe County relative to uh, transportation, uh, specifically the Tar River Transit. Um, and I really want to uh, correct any misconceptions about the service that we provide uh, here in uh, Edgecombe County. Um, to begin with, I just wanted to, to give you a, a kind of a background of uh, what we do. Uh, Tar River Transit is considered a community transportation provider. And what that means is that we are a public transportation provider um, for the county of Edgecombe as well as Nash County. Um, most counties, and um, I dare to say every county uh, in North Carolina, has a community transportation provider designated for that uh, specific county. Um, being a, a community transportation provider, that what that means is that we are sanctioned and supported by the North Carolina Department of Transportation, uh, NCDOT, which is stationed uh, in Raleigh. Um, Part of my uh, job as administrator and director is, is that I um, apply for funds, state funds, and sometimes federal funds uh, on behalf of Edgecombe County. Um, and those funds go towards uh, expenses um, that are associated with providing transportation uh, here in the area. And those funds are, are called our Rural Operating Assistance Program funds, and I apply for those funds annually on the uh, on behalf of Edgecombe County. Mr. Gardner, I'm going to pause you for one second. I'm going to ask IT if they could turn his microphone up just a little bit. Yeah, and kind of, <clears throat> kind of in that mic muscle. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, wow. We can hold it. No, I'm sorry. We do? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so as and to give you a little bit of history, uh, Tar River Trans has been in existence um, since 2002 as a, as the authority of Tar River Trans. Uh, we have been uh, providing transportation before that, but we have been known as Tar River Trans as that authority since 2002. Um, that authority is governed by what is called what we uh, is called an interlocal agreement, and that interlocal agreement is between the City of Rocky Mount. Uh, Edgecombe County and Nash County. Um, per that interlocal agreement, uh, there be, we have a transportation governing board, which is made up of a Nash County Commissioner, a Rocky Mount City Council member, and the Edgecombe County Commissioner, which um, Reverend Wayne Hines has served uh, on the board, at least since I've been in the position, and probably before that. <coughs> um, and so, basically, that is that is 
the history of Target of Transit and why why we are considered the the community transportation provider because we are the public transportation provider, which is um, supported by the North Carolina Department of Transportation, as opposed to um, uh, found transportation or flow by transportation, they're considered private transportation provider. Um, the, and like I mentioned, the main reason why I'm here this evening is, is because of some issues that came up in the uh, last meeting here uh, last month. Um, I, I received a phone call to, uh, to view the video of the last meeting, and, and to my dismay, I heard some pretty disparaging um, comments about Target for Transit that I would like to uh, personally address. Um, we <clears throat> were, um, well, let me explain the process of Medicaid transportation, which has been brought up um, in numerous meetings. Um, Medicaid transportation is for uh, citizens of Edgecombe County that are, that are Medicaid recipients, and they and the, and it provides transportation to and from doctor's appointments, which Target for Transit has been doing for um, quite some time now. Um, as far as um, the process for which that... I'm going to push this a little bit closer uh, to you. All right, thank you. As far as the process goes, um, any, any Medicaid recipient who has a doctor's appointment, um, they uh, Medicaid alerts social services. Um, and then social services alerts um, Tar River Transit through a referral and then we in turn put them on the schedule. Um, because we transport, on average, we transport anywhere between four to 500 passengers per day between Nash and Eskimo County, we um, have requested that those referrals get to us by at least two o'clock on the previous day, so that will allow us time to get those passengers uh, on the schedule. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were alerted by um, social services, Edgecombe County Social Services, that they had passengers that were receiving referrals. They were receiving referrals from referrals from passengers after two o'clock, which was what they referred to as a as an overflow. So they thought it would be best to contract with an additional transportation provider to um, adhere to that overflow. Which you know we at Tar River Transit we didn't have a problem with that at all. Now how that process was procured, how that contract was procured, and how that contract was subsequently um, expired for um, uh, found. Um, <clears throat> it's not the concern of Tar River Transit. That's not, that's not um, our business. But for some reason, during the last meeting, Tar River Transit was thrown into the fray of the argument, in my opinion, un unfairly. <laughs> Um, I heard accusations of we treat passengers like trash. Um, we, we did not address the issue of a damaged wheelchair. We do not allow passengers with weight issues to utilize vehicle um, wheel, wheelchair ramps. We pick up passengers when we feel like it. Um, and we ask passengers to be ready at 3 a.m. for 6 a.m. appointments. Um, for that note, I like I just like to say that um, anytime, the only time that we um, require that anything close to that is that we, we go to Greenville once a week and we also go to the Raleigh uh, Durham area once a week and we we do those trips we pick up everyone in the county as well as Nash County and we pick them all up at the same time and we and we provide that transportation and bring everybody back at the same time and some of those appointments are early so we do require for those out of town trips for the passengers to be ready um, maybe two or three hours before their appointment. <clears throat> but otherwise, that is for local um, transportation, that is not a requirement of Target for Transit. So one of the things I did not mention was that in the city of Rocky Mount, we contract with a transportation management firm, TransDev, and they handle all of the daily operations of our of, um, of the of Target for Transit. Myself and my assistant, uh, Quanisha Corwise, we are Rocky Mount City employees. But the drivers, the, the dispatchers, they all work for this management company, uh, TransDev. Um, <clears throat> also on staff at TransDev is a general manager, Ron Cooper. And Ron Cooper has been in that position for like 10 years now. And, and all that, all that Ron, Mr. Cooper preaches is um, safety and customer service. Now, I'm not about to stand here and say that Target of Transit is perfect. 
Um, there are times because of the many people that we do transport, we may fall short of providing safe and reliable transportation. Um, anytime that we do fall short, those those um, issues are immediately addressed by, by our staff. Um, but at the same time, by and large, um, Tower River Transit providing safe and reliable transportation is what we do and what we have, have been doing for the past, um, at least since I've been there, 20 years. So to hear these remarks um, was, was um, kind of took me aback a little bit because um, I, I kind of took that personally because that is not the type of uh, organization that I am the, the head of. We, we've been providing transportation for Edgecombe County for years now, um, reliable transportation for years now, and I, and I stand by that emphatically. And I also, now, while the citizens here, citizens here of Edgecombe County, they have their right to their opinion, uh, and they have their right to voice their opinion, and I respect their opinion, but I'm just here to categorically deny um, the fact that that we treat our passengers harshly or that, that we, um, we fall short, by and large, of providing safe and reliable transportation. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, I'd like to thank you, um, the board, for allowing me to, to uh, address this issue this, e this evening, and I'm open to any questions. Uh, the management company that we tra uh, that we use is uh, Transdev. It used to be First Transit, but they were bought out by Transdev uh, recently. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you if, if Rocky Mountain Transit has received any complaints in the They, they, we, we have received complaints. Um, if, if you're speaking specifically for for these issues, um, once I once I saw the video of the last meeting, I I had a meeting myself with uh, Mr. Cooper and his staff, and and he alerted me that for the specific um, allegations that were left against Tar River Trans during the last meeting, that um, his him and his staff did not receive any complaints to um, to those facts. <coughs> Well, well, let me just clarify. You know, when when you when you speak of um, the other company, it, in essence, as I mentioned, Tar River Transit is the authority. But you know, we we contract with this management company, but everything is still considered under the umbrella of Tar River Transit, for which I'm responsible. And I take full responsibility. Um, the, um, the 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 staff is right there in the same office as I am, and so any any complaints they do go directly to Mr. Cooper, with which he um, addresses those complaints. And then when I meet with him weekly, he alerts me of those complaints and also alerts me of the progress of how those complaints are being addressed and hopefully solved. The complaints do go directly to you, or to to Tar River Transit, yes, sir. And they are investigated. They are received and notified. Is there any type of form of letter or call? Um, anytime that there is a complaint, what, what we do, it is our policy to do what we call a follow up, and that is with a phone call. Um, and so, any complaint that is levied against Tar River Transit, it is it is investigated. Um, and and then when, once some closure has come to it, we do follow up with the passenger as to the status of that complaint. Did I you to say you had no complaints? No. Um, the, the, last meeting. the complaints that were levied against Tar River Transit during the last meeting, um, we had not received any complaints to that to that nature. Well, I would like to comment on what you stated <coughs> uh, in terms of the management company. That's just a contract between Tar River uh, Transit and the management company. So any complaint coming in would be against, as far as the public is concerned, would be against Tar River Transit. Right. But, but I we we didn't know we didn't know that there was a management company. Right. You know what I mean? So so we we our contract is with Tar River Transit, and that's what we expect to resolve the issues. Right. But the management company is considered Tar River Transit. So so in essence, that um, any any. 
any complaints levied against Tar River Transit is handled by that management company. From the standpoint, from the standpoint, we don't know that from the Tar River Transit. Right, exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is, is there any reason why you don't get the complaints too? What, directly? Yeah. Um, the main even, reason. Even though, even though the, the company may be responsible, but, but your mm -hmm. knowledge of, of what they are responsible for. Oh, I have I have knowledge um, because um, I, I have weekly meetings with um, the management company that handles uh, the complaints. So I am alerted of, of those complaints. And as I mentioned, I'm, I'm right there in the office as well. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm alerted of, of all complaints, either either right when it happens or at least within um, a couple of days. Well, and I and I've, I've addressed some of those complaints myself. The, the, I think the board's concerned is there are complaints. Are investigating and, and the, the complainants understand the source of the complaint. I think that's what we're concerned about. You know, the, the allegations here we don't know whether they're true or false. Right. They're public allegations that were made here, mm -hmm. and we contacted Tarver because you are our contract. Yes, sir. And so, and, and that resolution is between Tarver Transit and, and the complainants. Exactly. Any other comments or questions on the Just have one clarifying for Ms. Battle. Could could you clarify complaints that you received as well? Have you received the complaint, those same complaints or well we received complaints against Lobach. Okay. And we've investigated them. Every complaint we get, when it comes our way, we call them on the phone, we got we process <coughs> I think in transportation. We send the emails, they call these people. We make sure that their appointment is set up correctly. They're give, they're given a choice. They don't have to ride. It's up to them who they ride with. We offer the service. It's up to them. If they say I don't want to ride with Tar River, and I don't want to ride with Flow By, we don't have any other ride any other providers. So they will call the people and make sure that the appointment is straight. If we get a complaint that hey, so and so didn't come pick me up this morning. And then we may learn that um, they were scheduled for the ride and maybe um, the worker did not call them back to let them know, hey, you're scheduled with Tar River tomorrow. You're no longer riding with Fountain. And um, be ready in the morning at 7 or 8 or 9 or whatever the case may be. But to answer your question, Mr. Thorne, yes, we are investigating complaints like all day, every day. And we make sure to follow up on them all. Sometimes it might not be a complaint as much as it's That's exactly right. I've had, and I have to say that, thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Williams. You are so right, because I've had plenty of riders to say, I don't care who I ride with, I don't care who you send, but I got a dialysis tomorrow and I need to get there. And so we'll set them up with the, you know, whoever is available. Um, so no, not all of them are complaints. Actually, to be perfectly honest, the complaints are few. It's mostly the transition. People understanding that you no longer um, you no longer contract with Fountain. You are now contracted with Blowby, and so these are the two companies that you have available to provide service. I think it's just a transition, and you know I remind everyone that Blowby just got the contract September the first, so it's the end of September. Every company has started up the problems, and so I think the transition is going to eventually smooth itself out. We've been doing weekly field visits. I, I would like to ask Mr. Um, Williams to speak on that for you all so you can have some level of comfort about that. Him and his staff have been conducting weekly field visits to flow by just to make sure that everything is in order. But um, flow by not on the September. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're talking about for employees. You're talking about employees. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was talking about Mr. Williams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's your problem. Okay. But um, to answer your question, Mr. Thorne, yes, we all are investigating complaints. Everybody's getting something. Okay. Well, sure, and yeah, yeah, I just heard you make a statement that every startup company has problems. They're not ready to serve, and while they serve, they don't have problems. They have problems. I didn't say they weren't ready to serve. I'm saying the transition. But if they got problems, they're not ready to serve. Well, let me rephrase that. It's the transition. Mr. Mr. Williams is going to speak about the field visit and 
that will show that there are no problems with transportation. Mm -hmm. So I will rephrase that and say that every company, every new company, has um, a transition period. But I'm, I'm, still, I'm still asking you, why would they have a transition period of, of not fulfilling the contract when the startup time is September 1 and, and they still got issues they got to resolve? Because the transition is accommodating the change in the providers. Getting people to, to understand that Fountain is no longer providing the transportation service. You now have a new provider and transitioning those folks over to the new provider. One other thing. Um, does your, your new company have the same amount of vehicles available as the one that you have? Um, I'll let Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams and um, you want to take that one? Thank you. We're all here. All right. Yeah. Good evening. Um, when I did my site visit, with you local, name and title? Oh, sorry. Jonah Williams, Adult Services Supervisor for Edgecombe County DSA. Um, like Ms. Battle stated, I have done several site visits to flow by. Um, the first visit I went on, it had about seven to eight vehicles consisting of vans, buses, cars. Um, I checked the car, checked all the vehicles. Um, with some of the concerns we heard about. Um, all the cars, you know, I didn't smell anything, it was clean. Um, and it was they was doing a they was doing a cookout too to um, raise funds to add T shirts to the company, decals to the cars, which um, they have at this point. Um, Mr. Bourne here, he's been open to answer all questions. Um, and you know he's trying to he's doing the best they can since they've been in, in, in business with us. So with my site visit, I haven't had any concerns. And we also um, appointed one of our, work, our workers, our non um, excuse me, our transportation workers, to go continue to, to do site visits as he continues to serve our county. I'm still listening to the promise of serving their, uh, the needs pretty well to me. They, you know, like, it's been some hiccups, but um, like, like Ms. Battle said, when they are, we call them, we write on the phone with them. Um, if they miss someone, they'll go back and get them. Um, so, you know, it's, it hasn't been, it, it's been a, it's been pretty good, but it hasn't been perfect, but it's been pretty good. He's doing the best. You know, like I, why I say that, I mean, he's, he's doing all he, he needs to do for us. That's kind of better what you said. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. But I think the question to you have is at this time, you're satisfied with the contract. Yes, sir. I think it's our goal to serve the citizens of this country. You're satisfying the requirements of the contract. Yes, sir. You're satisfied with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and they, they will be monitored throughout the life of their contract if at some point it becomes evident that they're not able to live up to the terms of the contract. The staff will let Ms. Battle know, Ms. Battle will let me know, and then we'll decide that we need to make some transition. So far, um, I believe we've smoothed out some of the bumps we've seen in that transition. Uh, we certainly, to your point, Commissioner Harris, uh, certainly next time we'll make sure that we send those letters out more timely. Um, uh, but I think things are progressing um, better than, than what we've seen. It won't be perfect, it won't ever be perfect, but I think they have progressed and improved uh, a great deal. Is there anything else that comes up at this point? No, sir. And you all just hang around and we don't have public petition. I don't know what's going to happen with public petitions. At this time, if not, we fill the schedule appointments. Yes, sir. At this time, we have public petitions that we like to open up the public petitions Anybody at least come forward to take the name around this public record. And then, ladies and gentlemen, at public petition, we normally have three minutes, and we're going to hold you to those three minutes. Uh, uh, 
And first of all, let me know if you missed the problem. Before your comments, you bring on. Right. Mr. Mr. <coughs> Chairman, if I could say, you have three people that notified us in advance of the meeting that they like be scheduled to speak tonight. Would you like to start with them, sir? Well, we already got one up here, so he's one of them. Please state your name and address. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. My name is Angela Bryant. I live at 717 West End Street, uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I am here to speak to you on the issue of school demerger or merger, as it would be. I'm one of the community leaders who's been working on the school demerger issue uh, and merger issue for the last year. And an urgent issue has come to our attention, and we want to make sure it comes to your attention. And that this is a matter involving the redistricting of the Edgecombe County School Board as a result of the school merger. A problem has arisen in that in the le legislation that uh, most recently set the date uh, for the merger to happen and other parameters and including the authority for the Edgecombe School Board to redistrict, there was an oversight in that they didn't realize that the Edgecombe County School Board election occurs in March. The um, merger will occur in July. So the people who are merged in July cannot vote in an election in March. So therefore, they would have no way to participate in 2024 elections for representation. A second problem is that even if we move the election to November and you still had the same set of districts that you have now. The only districts up for election in 2024 are in East Tarboro and Macclesfield. That would be Worsley, Privet, and Ellis. So therefore, the citizens in Rocky Mount wouldn't be able to vote for any representation of the people in Rocky Mount anyway. So there are kind of two oversights to this problem. And so a, a legislative action is needed <coughs> in order to provide representation for the citizens of Edgecombe County that will be merged into the Edgecombe County School District in 2024, both to move the election, first and foremost, to November at least, and secondly, to require a plan that would allow all the districts to be elected in 2024 so that the citizens of Rocky Mount would have a choice on who would represent them in 2024. And it can be done similar to what was done in Nash County, in which the people who have terms expiring in 2026 could be, in essence, held harmless. That is, they would not lose their terms regardless of what the redistricting plan might be. And it could still be done with the Edgecombe County School Board having the authority to draw their own districts. And so we're asking that you look at that. There are 10,000 residents in Edgecombe Rocky Mount that will be merged into the Edgecombe County um, uh, School Board uh, districts. 20% uh, of the new district will be uh, Rocky Mount, and we think it's important, and those districts will need to increase. So we think that is important, and we ask that you uh, take action for this to happen with the legislature and for the school board to have the authority to do what they need to do. Thank you. Please, please stay right there because I have a I'm suggesting November. I mean, you know, only because it's I know about elections and school and election boards and counties don't like additional elections they have to pay for. So the likely the logical thing place thing would be November, but I did on state So I want to bring that to the board in terms of that was one of the things I had thought I was going to bring to the board later anyway, but it, it's an opportunity to speak to it now in terms of how the board feels about it. Because I know that our, our local 
legislators that thought that was the only thing they could say. Oh, that's just the board has, has talked about it. Would you, would I be correct? And, and, and I just want to emphasize that they need not only the authority to redistrict, but they need the authority to change the districting plan so that all the seats would be and, open. And, yeah. and, 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 and that's still the authority of the school board. Yes, but then they need the authority to do that, is all I'm saying. And I'm saying that based yes. on what you heard in terms of what the legislators, what our local legislators come up with, and they need to have conversations with our school board. That's something that we do for Well, if we need uh, uh, action on that, then we have to go to the So I think that this board is, while we don't want to do everything that we're taking the on the state board, we do Roman and I, we certainly want the people of, of Rocky Mountain represented in whatever happens, okay? Because okay. right now, with the gift of the year, I'm going to represent a district in terms of what action is going to take. Thank you. And, and if we need action, the board will take that action. Good evening. Criminal Stanton, 127 Midway Lane, Tallboro, P.O. Box 1391 Pine Um We are asking you to take whatever action you can influence the Edgecombe County Board of Education because until the merged Rocky Mount residents can vote, they have no representation on the Edgecombe School Board that would decide their rights and their fate. The only representative they have elected that can help them are on this board. Their county commissioners, the Rocky Mount City Council, the National County School Board and their state legislators. Please take action now to make sure they can vote for school board representation in 2024 after they get annexed. There has to be legislative action in the next few, day, few weeks to move the election and require the school board to redistrict with a plan that allows Rocky Mount to elect representation in 2024. You are one of the only elected voices that these citizens in Rocky Mount have. We need a school board to demonstrate the same transparency and concern for the Rocky Mount Edgecombe residents that have the right to vote for their new school board as they have shown for the assignment of students to the newly merged school facilities in the district. Thank you. Good evening. County Commissioners and staff. My name is Nathalyn O'Ree. I live at 1713 Beverly Road in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, in the Edgecombe um, side of the Nash County school system, which has decided that they would no longer be embracing us and they are um, releasing us into your loving care. Um, well, we're already in Edgecombe County, but at the school board, um, they're um, relieving us of their responsibility for our children. Therefore, we are raising the sound, raising the alarm, because we do not want this policy to come into effect without voting opportunity for the citizens in the Edgecombe County area. Um, a lot has gone on, and a lot of people have been asleep at the wheel, and they're waking up after the fact going, you know, what happened? And we don't want that to happen again. So we appreciate your attention and anything that you can do to help us in this process to make sure that those um, Edgecombe, those 10,000 citizens who have a right to vote are considered in the future in a timely fashion so that we will not be behind the wheel. Thank you for your attention. And I am a 4-H uh, former 4 H student, and I also had a 4 H club for over 10 years in the Edgecombe County. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I thank this board because I really just address that um, along with our school board. I think the school board will certainly do well to do this in the Holy Press along with other things that we would like to help them. Anybody else to speak?
Good evening. My name is Kelvin Barnhill, owner and operator of Flow By Incorporated. Just wanted to introduce myself to my company to let you guys know and everyone know that we are here to help support and help serve the individuals in Edge Coleman, Nash County um, in transportation. We have been doing transportation for quite some time, uh, doing services with uh, mental health, a service called MTM. We provide service for transportation for those individuals as well. And we're just grateful to know that we are able to come here and support uh, Edgecombe County in doing our transportation along with DSS. Um, working together as a team is very important in supporting our individual that we're serving. Um, as we alluded to earlier, yes, um, it may be a, a few uh, transitional issues uh, but granted, those issues have been smoothed and out, smoothed out, and we're moving forward. Um, just want to let you guys know that we are here to support the individuals every day, uh, along with DSS and doing what we need to do. Thank you. From the lines, 201 Devonshire Pine Top, North Carolina, 2054. Yeah, she said she been getting a complaint about trains. I was the one that told y'all when I was riding trains van and my arm on my truck got damaged. And my arm had been there, my arm would have got hurt. I called in and I told them what happened. And this is what was told to me, as I told you before. She said, we don't have insurance to cover your chair. And then on the second time, this chair here got messed up. It was a, they messed up the coal. I called in for that. Once again, she told me they didn't have insurance. And she said she sent out note for us. I've been at them shop for 12 years. I did not get no letter stating that we could no longer ride a um, fountain transportation. I haven't gotten no letter. I haven't read a lot. I didn't get no letter. But when I called her, was talking to her about the ride, and I told her I would like to ride transport fountain transportation, this is what she told me. She said, if you ride fountain transportation, you will pay for it. And I hung the phone with Because I felt like I had the right and authority to ride, you know, the van we like to ride. Why should we just throw us out and let, let like we want to ride fountain transportation? Why is it a problem we can't ride transportation? When fountain transportation come in, I start riding fountain, rocking my train, and I got on fountain. And I've been satisfied. And I feel like as long as I'm satisfied, I should be able to keep riding that thing. You, I, I got, by me not going to the doctor, right now, my blood pressure is 148 over 1. I shouldn't have to suffer because I can't get stuck and get my mouth. And I, like I said, when I ride in that van, I got scared that they was going home on a Friday afternoon. That lady on the van like to kill us all on that van. And I'm scared to get back on fountain, on like my train van. And I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to ride and be comfortable going back and forth to the doctor. Shouldn't nobody have to live like this. They sitting here saying they did this to that us and they did that. No, they're lying. They, not, they did not do it. And I called him and made those two complaints. And she said I did. But I did. I really did. Thank you. Who did you talk to, ma'am? Sir, I can't tell you who I talked to. All I know when I called to uh, rock my trains, I talked to the, the dispatch. And I told her about my trip. And she said they didn't have insurance to cover my trip. Let me say this to all of us. You talk to somebody, you need a name. I, 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 you're right. I learned that. You, you, you need a name. You need to know who you are talking to. And if they can't give you a name, you need to call somebody on that person. There's a way to get what you need. All you need is a name. And, and and if you don't get a name, you don't get nothing but the list. You're right. I learned. And, and, and that's why I was asking you, who, who did you talk to? Sir, I cannot tell you who I talked to. All I know, I called in, I called in twice. But I can't tell you who I talked to. Appreciate but the only thing they told me, they did not have insurance to cover the wheelchair. And, and, and see, that's a dismissal statement to tell you that. 
They told me that so they did not have insurance to cover the wheelchair. <laughs> there was Rockin' Lot train told me that on my phone. But I don't have a name. No, you don't. And, and, and I'm saying again to you, whenever you talk to anybody, whoever you talk to, you need a name. And write that name down and identify that person. Because there's something you just don't tell folks. And that was one of the things that they shouldn't have told they me. They were told to me. They don't have insurance. Nope. What they doing operating with no insurance? They told, that's what, I'm, I'm repeating what they told me on the phone. Okay. And then like I said, I, 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 wish I, I wish I had a name I could hear. Yeah. I know you do. I do too. Yeah. I do too. If you want to come and pick up a petition, please. Mr. Gardner, come speak. Are, are you done? You're done. Uh, respectfully, um, I'm, I didn't want to speak again to refute um, the citizens' claims. Well, but we are not here to put the in the I understand that. Okay. I, all, I, all I want to do is explain our process when it comes you, to something you like that. Explain your process. Okay. You got your process right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. But you still need a name. Whenever you got a complaint and you make a call, you need to know who you are talking to. And that's so important. Thanks for telling me. I know that time. All right. Is there anybody else here? <clears throat> My name is Anthony Davis. I live 625 East Holland Street, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I'm here with a complaint about this new transportation system we got going on. It sucks. I was supposed to have surgery last week. They called in a week ahead of time. They said, oh, somebody be there. Oh, when? You know they called me again? At 11.30, the people at the hospital had done canceled the, the surgery, rescheduled me. I'm sitting there hurting. I'm still hurting. But they said, oh, we we got ample transportation. We're going to take you some. Yeah, you're going to take me to hell if you don't, you know, come and take me to the doctor. And the other day, they, they sent out a van, broken windshield, mm -hmm. dirty, stinking, the door, the front wasn't open. The guy was stinking, the band was stinking, and you know, and they said he you know William said he, he inspected the vehicle. You blind? <laughs> this guy said he had just got hired that morning. They must have picked him off the of the dump somewhere. And his van also. And they talk about they providing uh, uh, adequate transportation. No sir. The first time I rode with this company, the lady, they said, oh, well, I'm in front of your house. I said, I am too. <laughs> she said, I'm in Tarboro. I said, damn, I, I live in Rocky Mountain. She said, I'm sitting in front of your house, but she's in Tarboro. This company that we're dealing with, they got more than just some flaws they ironing out. They don't have the courtesy to call you. And they'll call you uh, after your appointment is over. Uh, oh, we got somebody coming to pick you up. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, went to Raleigh in their van. The driver stated that he had reported that one of the tires had a nail in it. And he noticed that morning, they told him to take the van anyway. He goes to Raleigh, I go to see his doctor. And on the way back, tire's flat. Got to get out there. We're beside the road. He's changing the tire. Then the donut don't have any air. It goes bloop, bloop, bloop to the nearest gas station. Come on. Who who was the person that expected their vehicle? Huh? They should have a system to where whoever hired this company had somebody to go and really check out their fleet of vehicles and check out the driver 
They had no safety precaution. They put me in a wheelchair in there. I'm sitting crossways in a chair. And I got bad legs. I need to stretch them out. You understand me? And uh, if you can't be comfortable going to the doctor and you're scared to ride in these damn vehicles, hey, might as well just use one of them shovels you got. Get 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 up one of them shovels you got right there to dig a grave for you. So they're unsafe. They don't lock, they don't strap you in like you should be. And these heat days they're in that courier. And uh, for you, Mr. Williams, you know, you and I spoke last week. Okay? Please, please, please speak to the board. Speak okay, the board. I'm speaking to the board. I spoke to him last week about this transportation company. He said he see, well, he just now, he said, he don't see nothing wrong with it. He told me a different story. He's like most politicians. You know what they do. Yeah, they, yeah, most of y'all, most of y'all, yeah. So now you, now you tell the truth. Politicians and lawyers are about to say. Yeah, okay. Okay, but you know what you do, though. Once you get in office, you, you fine. Yes, sir. You done told that thing before you got there. Yeah, yeah good. That ain't even like I say, him. Y'all need to investigate this company more because somebody get real serious hurt riding and some of them dust drops they got. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Just, just as you have accused us of not telling the truth, again, when you talk to whoever you talk to. Get a name. I just, a didn't name. I just tell you? A name? And, and, and I hope that that investigation would be We've got to treat people right. Yeah, well. And, and, and I did, didn't I call a name? I said, Mr. Williams, right there. And, and Mr. Williams said that things was okay. Yeah. You uh, said they're not. Somebody, I told you, he's just he like a politician. And him. Which one? Him. Him and the government. And, and, and I say to you again, over and over again, need a name. I just can't do the name. As, as, as the complaints uh, come, somebody needs to Somebody needs to address things just don't happen. Tamika Brown, ten twenty nine Moore Street. I was the one that was up here talking for, for sound transportation. Miss Betty Battle, she don't know what she's talking about. That woman ain't telling the truth. Because I don't talk to her. She's smart-mouthed. Because if you don't like what you what she wants you to say, she's going to give you smart-mouthed. Me being from New Jersey, I'm going to give it back to you, baby. I'm going to give it back to you hard. Because Rocky Mount Transit, they don't even need to be working. Number one, they say they pick you up according to your appointment. Y'all see that gentleman sitting right there in the blue? In the red and blue? I live with him. He gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning for a 6, what, 15 appointment? Every day. And half of the time, he don't even know they out there. He wakes my 20-year-old son to go lay in the front room on the couch with the door open so he'll know they out there. They don't blow no horn, and they don't call. The only time they call, we was outside, we gone, we're not coming back, and they don't come back. This other transportation, flow rider. I wouldn't say put in nothing. They ride in. My first pickup was in a woman's car. A black Camry. Tinted windows. Smelled like sex and weed. Now, if they out in the field, he don't know what they doing when they out there in that field. He don't know when they parked waiting on somebody what they're doing. If he ain't in that van with them. And, and, and the whole thing is, 
It's not way she said point system. There ain't no point system. Money talk shit whoa. And that's what that is. Because she sitting in her office, she ain't out here. She sitting in her office pushing papers. She don't care because at the end of the day, she getting where she got to get to, working whatever. She making her money. We are in the hospital. We don't have the... I just spent from last Tuesday up until last Thursday in the hospital because I don't have normal transportation. Any two times you get dropped off at the doctor's office, I sit in the chair for four and a half hours for dialysis. And then when I get off, it's people at my dialysis office right now. The only reason they're not here to speak up is because they scared if they open their mouth. How they going to get treated on Rocky Mountain trains? Them old folks don't like riding with Rocky Mountain. They scared. The first thing they tell me is, Tamika, if we was like you, if we wasn't scared to speak out, we would. Why not? I am 42 years old and I ain't never been scared. I ain't scared about one person. That's Jesus. And it, it's not fair. If they not out here, you sit out there at a, at a doctor's office and you wait. Or you get this phone, you get this one. You call and ask where the van at. Oh, they had a wreck. Oh, so now you sit in there waiting until they get you another van. You don't know what time that's going to be. You don't know. Because you don't know who coming to get you. All they say is we're gonna get you another, another. We're gonna get you another. We're gonna get you a van there. They ain't gonna tell you no different. And then you call Rocky Mountain Transit and Tammy up there at Rocky Mountain Transit. She one of them folks that you just need to take out the the building and sit her outside. Cause that's what she need to be at her way home. She don't need to be running nothing. These folks. They just got up here and spoke. They don't know what we go through. They don't know. They're not sitting in these dialysis chairs. When we get out of those chairs, we're ready to go home and eat. We can't eat in the morning because we're on dialysis. We sit in the chair for four hours. And the impossibility in them four hours that we in that chair... Our blood pressure drop real low. Some of us sugar drop. Then we got to get ourselves together, get up out those chairs to go get in a van that ain't out there. You got to wait two. And sometimes when I was riding Rocky Mountain Trains, because I refused to ride them. I was on, I was at dialysis when they got off at three o'clock. I didn't get home until five. Oh, we was, I'm sorry. They had me tied up. If you got so many clients, don't you think it would be best to have more than one company? If you got that many clients and you that busy, because Flo Rob ain't doing jack. Because don't nobody want to ride with him. But instead, he said... Mr. Will said he go and inspect. I need his eyes to inspect what he inspected. Because I inspected not good. I inspected rudeness. Nastiness. These folks don't know what they're doing. And yeah, as he said, companies have little quirks. No, that's not a quirk. That's a problem. Because I'm gonna put it to you like this: Would you? Would you put your child on that? But no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Let's see if your child would like to ride on a van vehicle like that. I'm done because you're gonna see me again, and I'm gonna be here every time. 
till y'all get something back and let these rascals go. Hi, my name is Stephanie Cherry, and I live in Tarver. I live on um, between Princeville and Canada. So I live in Mill. Um, this is the first time that I ever had to ride transportation because I had a few surgeries. So when I did call um, social service to set it up, I asked them did they have anybody other than Tarver the Transit, only because my son used to ride Tarver the Transit, and I didn't like uh, the way they would come have you be ready two hours early. And for somebody like me that's not moving as well, that's a bit much. So if my appointment is at 8 o'clock, I have to be sitting there ready at 6. That's a bit much because you can come at any time. And so that's why I stopped my son from riding because they would pick him up and drop him off when his job wasn't open. And he's like six feet black man standing somewhere waiting for a job to open. And I felt that that was unsafe. So when I chose... To ride, the first thing I asked the young lady, I forget her name, but they only have like two workers that answer as social service, and one sounds really young. I forget her name. But when I called, I was like, do you have anybody other than Target the Transit? Um, and she said, yeah. And she said, Fountain. So it's my first time ever riding transportation. And I can honestly say I really do like Fountain. Um, I like their professionalism. I like that they, they they call me and let me know when they're on their way. Ooh. So when I was going to therapy, so I would always um, set my appointments at 8. They would come and get me there, and they would wait for me because nobody else had an appointment. And I can't really sit in certain vehicles, so they would um, make sure that everything was well. So with them not having um, <laughs> fountain right now, okay, so we had to switch. So in my switching, I had some important appointments. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I was supposed to be in Raleigh. Monday, three hours. Tuesday, an hour. Wednesday, an hour. And I called social service ahead of time on the 15th to set it up. The young lady was professional at social service. I knew she handled that because we talked, and she let me know that she sent the information over to the new company. Well, when I didn't hear from them Friday, I said, oh my gosh, I should have called them Friday. I didn't hear from them. I said, okay, well, maybe they're going to do me like Fountain and call me Monday morning and say, well, we're on our way to pick you up at such such a time. I didn't hear from them. I called them. She said, oh, I didn't get the information. Um, and she blamed it on the work at social service, which I knew that wasn't untrue. She said, oh, she didn't send it over. So when people do add-ons, she's supposed to send me another form. But I called social service on the 15th, and I knew that young lady had handled her business because she knew she called me back because she knew when I left her a message how important that call was. Okay, so I let that go. So in the middle of that, I had to get somebody to drive me because this was an important appointment. couldn't be um, canceled. So Tuesday, I said, okay, well, she set it up for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Tuesday, I didn't see I would have a problem because I talked to the lady. Her name is Aisha. What's her name? Alright, Ika, that worked at the new place? Something? Okay. So, Tuesday, I didn't think I would have a problem. I had to be there at 1 o'clock. I didn't hear from them. So, when I called them, she said, I said, so, what time are y'all going to be here? She said, oh, let me, let me call you right back. So, she called me right back and said, all of my drivers are having problems with the devil. So, I said, <laughs> So I said, okay, so I said to my niece, let's go, because I had to go back because I had some kind of dye in my body. So she called me, and she said, the driver is on his way, and I'm on a highway. She said, the driver is on his way. So I said, where is he? She said, he's on 64. And I said, is he on the bypass or coming the old way? Because if you put my address into your GPS, 3769 U.S. Highway 64, Alternate East. If you put it in your GPS, it's going to take you to Rocky Mountain. So with them never having been to my house, I don't know where he was headed. So I told her, I'm good. I said, I'm on my way. 
And then she blamed it on a girl at social service. So what I did in my car, I called the young lady that worked at social service. And I let her know that she was being thrown under the bus. And the lady told me that she called their supervisor. I said, check, and I know that you handled this accordingly. And I would have felt better if the person at this new company would have said, I apologize. It was our mistake. I'm sorry. We're trying to get some kinks out um, there with us. But instead, she just totally lied and tried to throw the work at social service under the bus, and I didn't appreciate that. So I'm wondering, you know, what's the issue? And then I asked her, I, I let her know that I couldn't really sit in a car in the transit type seat. And she said, well, we, we ride in cars and something. And so I, I never had any experience with them. My experience with them wasn't good because I felt like they lied and they threw a good work up under the bus that I have been uh, dealing with since I started having to ride transportation. And I can honestly say for me, Fountain is very good, and I yes, like their own personality. I, I like because when I first started riding, I'm gonna be honest. When they wasn't, when they did have to leave me a few times when I first started riding, never having to ride transportation, I would call back and I would be like, "Where the driver at?" And they would be like, "Oh, she'll be there in 15 minutes. 15 minutes go by, I'm calling you back." And one thing I, I really liked about Fountain, I told any driver that I ever had with them, and I even I'm an equal opportunity person. If you give me good customer service. I'm going to compliment you. If you give me bad, I'm going to report you. And I can honestly say, I know I have a tone and I have an attitude sometimes. And I don't care who I spoke to, their, their, their tone has never changed with me or anything. And, and I know I'm a lot. And so I could be. And so I just really, with y'all would get sorry with transit that because not sorry with transit fountain. Only because it's causing a lot of issue with people that they already had yeah. riding yeah. that they was already used to. Yep. And I was like, it's creating so many issues at this point. But thank you. I agree. My name is Brenda Wiggins Davis, the young, man, the young man in the wheelchair. I am his caretaker and wife. You pray for me. Now, I don't want to be redundant, but I promise you that every complaint you have heard here today and every concern is real. From the beginning, we didn't know that Fountain was no longer going to pick us up. We got that message the morning we called to confirm that they would be on the way. And they said they can't come. They lost the contract. So we called DPSS. DPSS said they would send somebody out. But by the time they got there, it was too late for him to go to that appointment. I think DPSS should have given us notice before September 1. We didn't get notice until September 12th. Also, I've called all these people in this letter. Nobody ever seems to be at their desk. Ma'am, can you change that microphone real quick for you? Nobody ever seems to be at their desk, but I, I talk a lot. I don't mind talking out the message area and explaining myself, trying to get you to understand that there is an issue I want you to address. So I did. I left messages with Mr. Williams, Ms. Stewart, Mrs. Fox, Ms. Mayfield, Ms. Dupree, and Miss Mary Hopper. Now, Miss Mary Hopper has called me back, and Mr. Williams has called me back. And I know he is remembers talking to me on the phone. But like I said, these are serious issues that my husband has and these people. I heard someone say that they have four to five hundred people a day that they have to address. That's an overload. Why don't we have two companies? assisting DSS. And if we can't get two companies assisting DSS, why can't we fault 
flow with it. And change them out until they can handle the load. I don't want to sound redundant, but it's serious out there. Thank you. May I clarify a number that um, she just mentioned? So I think that 400 to 500 number was from Mr. Garvin with Tar River Transit. I think he's referring to their entire service area, not just Edgecombe County and not just Medicaid transportation. They provide transportation for other things as well. So I, I just want to clarify what that number was. Everybody else is good. Um, no, man. We we have at, at least um, five to ten vehicles that serve as Trump County. Uh, we have 32 vehicles within our fleet. 29 of them are wheelchair equipped, and so we out of that out of that 32, at least at least 10 vehicles serve as Trump County. Oh no, ma'am. Um, all all of the vehicles I mentioned they, they perform Medicaid transportation. Well, well, let me kind of sum up what I heard, and, and I, I, it, it does appear that we do have uh, some issues, and they are, as Ms. Bell said, changes. We got changes, but according to what we believe, this I understand this. Colorado Transit, uh, and we have uh, a contract, okay, that based on what has come to us, that they are saying to follow the process to get this bid. So, what we do have, Colorado contract that provides our transit, will be as our contract, and ladies and gentlemen, right now. Until such time as, uh, based on your complaints, our staff has investigated those complaints and made a determination. Flow B is our contract. And I've, I've heard it that, that they are our contract. Until such time as they have, as as this as information comes to this board. From our investigation and from our staff to make a determination otherwise, that is our contract. Now, I've heard some of you say, and the third option is available to uh, our residents to use this service. Okay? And, and based on what Mr. Mr. Evans has said, you know, all of this is federal and state money, federal and state money. It's administered by Tom River, and we have a contract. And we have discussed the options, and seek the reasons why the options of a loan and a contract. That question was raised with our board, within our board. We've talked about that. And your comments on that, Mr. Evans, were fine. Well, overall, I think uh, Ms. Battle mentioned we have 300 and some clients currently who, we, who are using Medicaid transportation, whether it be either, either of our two contractors. Um, the more contractors that you have providing that service, um, then the fewer customers they're able to transport, potentially transport. And, and at some point, it has to make business sense for the company um, to be able to have the fleet and hire the staff to be able to do that. Now, I will say that um, Ms. Battle and her staff in, in their uh, research since we've started discussing this. Most counties surrounding us only have one provider, and that being a regional provider like Tar River Transit. Um, so it is somewhat uh, somewhat unusual um, for us to have a secondary provider. I think it's, you know, now I think it's a good thing for us to offer that as an option. We're glad that we're able to, uh, to offer that as an option. We'll continue 
and monitor both, both our service providers and try to address any issues we can as quickly as we can. Past relationship with the council, the contractor. We can't base who we get based on what your past relationship was if they do not if they did not come out of that bid process. Uh, we can't just go out and get who you think we ought to get as a provider. But with your continued input in it, and if that if, it's, if our staff determined that it's not working, then we would have to make some decisions. But until such time, I would have to say to you that if the board thinks different, uh, they have they have followed our process to obtain uh, that contract. Until such time as we get information, that's not fair to us. I'm sorry, but that's not fair to that us. That is not fair at all. That's not fair. Yeah, that, if that, you don't get it right, can we call you? Take us? I'm sorry, but that's not fair. I, I, I need somebody to ride fair. me now. Yeah, well, that's but, not fair. But, but I, I'm, that's I'm, not I'm fair, just, though. I'm, I'm sorry, but please, it's not please, fair. Please hold your comment, please. I'm sorry, but it's not fair. I can't. I just can't say it like this because it's not fair. It's just not fair. That, that's where we are. No, no, no. It's just not fair, though. It's not fair. You're wrong. Not fair. It, 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 it's like y'all. It's right. like y'all sitting up there. Y'all get to make the decision, but y'all ain't in the room. Y'all have to ride on people. We have to ride on faith. Make the decision. We have to ride on faith. We don't want to be like that. Should be like you. Should be like you. I'm gonna have to ask you all. Well, sir, I'm sorry. I'm not disrespecting you or nothing, but it's not fair. Yeah, it ain't. It's not fair. It ain't. It's not fair. We got your people over here. You don't have to ride on faith. We do. What is wrong? We do. I feel like we should have some say so. I'm that's, sorry, I'm not disrespecting anything. That's something that this boy has never done. But we, we, we y'all wrong. Y'all wrong. Hold on, y'all wrong. Can I ask you a question? No, no, y'all is wrong. Hold on, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Y'all wrong. wrong. I understand. Y'all says 108, and you can tell me what I can't do? You're wrong. I'm going to tell you out of order. Maybe that's heaven. But you're wrong. I'm going to tell all of you out of order. You're wrong. And please you're wrong. refrain from an outburst. You're wrong. Please refrain from an outburst. Wrong. Wrong. Moving on to the next agenda item, Ms. Evans. Wrong. Next item is uh, under <coughs> other business is consideration of budget amendments. You have a number of amendments for your review. You'll see that budget amendments numbers one through four are those that require your approval. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about those. I recommend that you approve budget amendments number one through four. The remaining are for your information. Motion. We'll be back. Second. No, you go ahead. You got the chair. Y'all got everything. Go ahead. Take four. You go ahead. You know I go This thing goes. Did we get a second? Okay. <laughs> Question. Number one. Yes, ma'am. So you'll remember at last month's meeting you approved uh, a memorandum of agreement with the uh, State Department of Public Safety. The state is appropriating $100,000 to help us with debris cleanup from the July tornado. Uh, at that meeting, um, we said that uh, we believe, including the cost of uh, tipping fees at the landfill, it was going to be much more than that, around $300,000. Uh, so the two things that I recommended you do at that meeting was to, number one, approve accepting that $100,000 from the state. Secondly, to appropriate $50,000 from fund balance to help cover the difference. And third, to waive the tipping fees at our landfill. And that was with understanding we were requesting funds, additional funds from the state. And if we receive additional funds, then we will then reimburse ourselves for those tipping fees. And I was going to mention it later, but I will mention that we have got some funds appropriated. 
we have been uh, notified we're getting some funds, additional funds from the state. So what this is, this is a budget amendment to formalize what you agreed to do. Any more questions? All in favor, let me know by the motion. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Just one comment. I just want to thank the staff for um, elaborating on the purpose. I really, I think that's a great clarification for our budget. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Next. Um, item D is regarding approval of land transfer to Hicksville County ABC Board. Uh, it was brought to your attention at your March meeting uh, that the Hicksville County ABC Board has requested land from the county for the purpose of constructing a new warehouse. The ABC Board asked that the county donate part of a parcel the county owns at the corner of Anaconda and McNair Road. You authorized me to proceed with determining the exact location and layout to bring back for your consideration. Attaches both an area map as well as preliminary site layout map. Uh, we have here tonight Mr. Shep, Representative Shallon Willingham, who serves as chairman of the ABC Edgecombe ABC Board, uh, who will present and discuss proposed use of the facility and answer questions you may have. I do recommend that you approve the donation of the lot to not exceed three acres to Edgecombe County ABC Board and authorize county attorney to prepare and need to execute the necessary document. Yes, <coughs> The meetings are about as exciting as I, I was in Raleigh. <coughs> I lose my voice here. Uh, what we're requesting is this land to build a warehouse, and what this will do for us for the ABC system. Uh, if we have a warehouse, and what this will do allow us to buy products, more products that we can sell uh, at uh, prices that we get when uh, the liquor goes on sale. Every other month, liquor goes on sale for the ABC system, the distributors and the distillers, they have uh, discounts that they give. And so if we can purchase more, we have somewhere to put it, we can sell it. Uh, right now, of course, we get a truckload every, well, we get two, we get a truckload every week. Uh, if we were able to store uh, more uh, product, then of course we can sell more. Uh, and then, of course, if we get uh, the product when it's on sale, then, of course, when it goes off sale, that's every other month. And, of course, this would mean that uh, the bottom line would be, you know, uh, much bigger. So it's, it's really simple. We just need a place to put more product. We can sell it if we can get it. We just haven't been able to uh, be in a position to uh, buy more product and have somewhere to put it. So... That's why we're requesting this, and that's why we need uh, the warehouse. Right now, what we do, we store uh, the product in, the, in two of the stores, the one here in Tarboro and also one in Rocky Mount, but that's not enough space. on the agenda is regarding addressing uh, our fleet needs. Um, as we discussed at your last meeting, we are considering options to meet the fleet needs that we have, especially for the Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Atkinson has a relatively large percentage of high mileage vehicles on the road. Based on the information he and his team provided, we need to acquire at least 20 new vehicles to get his fleet to a more reliable state. One option that has been presented is to lease those vehicles. At your special meeting on September 19, you received a presentation from Mr. Benjamin Crothheimer with Enterprise Fleet Management. He shared the benefits of leasing vehicles and the potential costs. You asked that a more specific proposal be done so you can see the actual cost for the specific vehicles we would lease if we chose to go that route. That update is, pro is provided here in your packet. I've also included a copy of the 
proposal presented to you at your last meeting so you can refer to the details of the lease program. There are benefits to leasing vehicles that to meet our needs, uh, fleet needs, including assistance with finding vehicles for purchase, assistance with the management of the fleet, and more frequent turnover of vehicles. However, the ongoing annual cost of leasing, in this case $434,340 for 28 vehicles, in light of the additional costs we just encumbered with the implementation of our compensation plan, prompts me to recommend another approach. As you know, we plan to soon sell our ownership interest in a building in Rocky Mountain that has been occupied by East Point to Nash County. The offer for our 45% ownership share is $2 million. I recommend that we use $1 million of that plus the $125,000 we already have budgeted for cars to purchase approximately 20 new vehicles for the share. That would include also upfit for those vehicles. We can also internally improve our tracking, maintenance, and turnover of our fleet moving forward. My staff and I certainly stand ready to implement whichever option that the board chooses. Uh, I do want to uh, point out that Mr. Crothimer of Enterprise Fleet Management is here again tonight in case you have uh, any uh, questions with that. Um, also, as just for your uh, awareness, if you do choose to go um, to um, instruct staff to proceed with leasing vehicles, we will have to get that approved by the local government uh, commission. Of course, that means we'll have to apply to sit before them. Um, this procedural step just adds some time to it, um, but just wanted you to be uh, aware of that. Kevin, answer any questions that you might have. And that means that it's open for more discussion in terms of what we're going to do here. That you should see what the landlord has recommend authorizing them to proceed with the purchase of 20 days how do we instruct the manager to proceed with this uh, open board discussion? That's probably the most vocal proponent for leasing vehicles on the board. I'll kind of start us with I still am in favor of leasing the vehicles. The system that we have now is not working. And so we have, with the sale of this building, the ability to fund a lease program for 20 vehicles plus the other county vehicles that the enterprise is requiring and see if it works. I mean, we haven't had that ability in the past. We've never had that ability with how we budget for vehicles in the past. So why wouldn't we give it a try and see how it works? Um, every other county, every other municipality around us is doing it. So there must be some validity to the program. The city of Rocky Mountain is taking their entire fleet. So they obviously believe in this program. Um, so that would be my my recommendation to the board. My other recommendation to the board, if we want to go with a lease program, since we have the upfront cost to do the upfit, we should pay for the upfit, not in the lease. We shouldn't finance the upfit in the lease because then you're paying interest on the upfit. We have the cash. So pay the upfit with our cash and then finance the vehicle just like you finance a normal vehicle. And if you look at the menu pricing, you see where they broke out what the actual car is versus what the lease is with the upfit. So they were financing $12,000 of upfit. We wouldn't need to finance the upfit in the lease payment because we're paying for it with the cash. So that, that's what my chart here says. Um, the real breakdown of that is over the three year period, you save $17,000. So you could really upfit one more vehicle and have $5,000 left over by paying for that in cash, which we have the ability or will have you. And, and I think I take the position of um, the manager's recommendation and while the budget is ours, but we, we charge the manager with making sure that the budget is a balanced one. Uh, I'd like to see just one question. I thought we were um, looking at 2.2 million, would that be? Yeah, I think it might be in excess of in excess of two, so let's let's don't leave that out there. Right. Them them expecting this, okay, okay, <laughs> for the sale of this building, all right. Yeah, I'm, that that was the offer that's been communicated. Certainly, it could but, land but that wasn't one that was talked about. Okay, let's leave that. That's an open question in terms of okay. Yes, uh, but my recommendation would be to see with what it appears that the manager is on board of making sure that we get some vehicles for the sheriff's department. It's kind of it's kind of waiting until such time as 
because we did what we expected to do. I said I would do it, but I was a total land condition, and I think we need to hear from the board in terms of we need to give the manager direction, and the direction is how uh, we decide that we're going to proceed. Is there any other uh, public comments from us? Because I, I would like to see where we're headed. Mr. Williams, may I ask uh, our attorney a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Peters, in regards to that money that you would be coming from East Point, can you give us, I mean, we, I think I termed that pretty much accurate, should be coming. From Nash County. From Nash County, okay. Uh, any timeline on that? No, sir. You know, we, we hope it will be soon. We hope it will be in the next several months. So we can certainly we're having an ongoing discussion with Nash County. And, and I think he's exactly right. Uh, we are, we, you know, we, we, I think we're closer than we were based on the way some of the legal action is going. And that was because of some legal action. But uh, I wouldn't give a time frame in terms of the, um, I think we were expecting it in the next six to eight months, but that could not be written. Yes, yes, sir. I understand. Well, I'll get ready to say something that's really out of character for me from my own personal experience because I would not dare lease a vehicle, but I'm on board with Mr. Bourne. Uh, Mr. Evans wants to get off the list, and uh, so do I. I want to get off the list. We've been talking about the sheriff's uh, needs, and this waiting and see. We, we've been waiting and seeing ever since I've been on this ball board. And whatever we got to do, I, I, I mean, I look, I, I was sitting here kind of like a peddler doing like this. But if, if, if we can go ahead and lease, and that's the quickest thing to do, then let's do it. That's my two cents. Yeah, I guess may have another question. Go right ahead. We can't do anything until we get word on East Point, right? Well, no, it's not a problem with East Point. We can, no, we can do it. We can do what we're gonna do whatever we say, okay. <laughs> but are we gonna say we need to do something now? Oh, that's without the money from this point. That's that's a, that's that's what's on the that's what's really on the table, uh, Reverend Hines, in terms of when we give the manager instructions, proceed with that lease, and based on that, he has to do so. We probably will have to be some budget in there and other things done to make that happen. But that's the question that if you can help us where you are and where you support the manager's recommendation for whether you talk about leases and that would help us give him a sense of direction as to where we want to go with it. But my question still is, can we do anything without each point? Yes, we, we can. We can. We can. We can. We can. Okay. We can, we, not each, it's not really each point. It's a sale of our land uh, to the cash can. A sale of land. Yeah. Anybody else? talking about moving money that's coming in from the sale of the building to fund this. His purchase for 20 vehicles is coming from the sale of the building. So we can just take that money and budget it right up front. Just 
sit, sit stand on this and call it. But what happens if we don't get the money to shake them up? I mean, you could tell them to authorize it as soon as the money comes in. That's our that's our decision. Once the money from the building sale comes in, we could authorize it then. It's my understanding that we have plenty of reserves to do that and then fund, just move it back to the fund balance once we have. I think we're operating at a 26%. I'll, I'll give you a hey, sure. Well, I don't like putting the car on the floorboard. I don't trust that that guy. And uh, I'm not the person who um, well, I, I believe the manager had taken all this into consideration before he made his I attend some after lengthy conversation with the service committee and asked a lot of questions. I can't be wrong. Well, you're wrong. Right. So you are saying that we can do what we need to do for the sheriff before we get the money from each one. Well, nice guy. my recommendation was to wait until we got that money. Now, you as a board can decide that you want to go ahead and pull that money from fund balance if you want to. And that's certainly up to you to decide to do that. I would need you to spend part of your motion if you're going to make a motion to it. Where, 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 where would we be if we got the money from fund balance? Where would fund balance be? Would it be according to still according to where the state wants to be with fund balance? Well, we're, we're well above the requirement for the state, which is 8%. At the end of our 22 audit, we were a little over 26%. Now, we did uh, we did cut into that $2 million here recently with our compensation plan. That's That'll that'll be ongoing. So uh, that's about 3 percentage points, 4 percentage points on our unassigned fund balance. So we still would we still be where the state requires us to be with without fund balance. You, you will be well above. You, you'll be well above that. Whether you choose to spend the money to purchase outright or you chose to, to lease vehicles, we, we would still be well above the 8%. Yes, sir. When our sheriff, our sheriff had an opinion on this, of whether he would keep the money or not, or would he take it for a person? Well, I'm... I'm well, he wants to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know I'd, I'd be cautious to try to speak on, on behalf of him. I know he has, his, he and his staff have discussed leasing as an option, uh, have discussed it with, with the company Enterprise, and I know he, he wants to have a more reliable fleet, but I don't want to sit here and speak for him and whether or not he preferred leasing or purchase. Excuse me. Yes, I want to make one comment. Um, just keep in mind again, thank you, uh, Ben Kratomer, for having me out. Um, you won't see these vehicles for several months, so keep that in consideration when you're budgeting. And then when you get those vehicles and they land, let's say January or February, you're only going to be responsible budgeted for the remaining months of the fiscal year. So if you don't see those vehicles till March or April, you know, just uh, prorate that. So keep that in mind. It's just important to get those vehicles on order. And again, some, some lead times are six months out, so we just want to be proactive. And that's uh, just a function of finding the vehicles and then being finding available. vehicles, arranging upfit, um, manufacturer cutoffs. We're in an order worker strike right now, so it's more than ever just trying to need to be proactive. <laughs> so what you're actually budgeting for, it might come in this fiscal a lot less, just based on inventory and when those vehicles deliver. But just as you know, in Rocky Mount, we just need to start looking for vehicles and sourcing them. Quick, yeah. When would you expect a check from you don't, each going account? It's each vehicle is its own individual contract, and we don't require a check till the month following when a vehicle delivers. So if you don't take delivery for let's say vehicle A until March, you get your first invoice, your monthly invoice uh, the following month. So nothing would be uh, there'd be no invoice and no billing until vehicles start delivering. We just need to order them or start sourcing to find them. So we could sit here in six months and have not collected a, a thing at that time. I'm supporting the idea of getting the vehicles for the sheriff, but the sheriff had, had asked, and uh, 
item on the agenda is regarding uh, our revisions to our compensation plan. At your September meeting, you approved the implementation of our new compensation plan. Since the new compensation plan is such an overhaul from our previous one, we continue to review it to see if there are any errors to fix or changes to make. After a review from our department has, we have the following update for your consideration to address those corrections and changes needed. Attached is a summary of those changes, which present no additional appropriation needed to the budget. I recommend that you approve the updated compensation plan ordinance as presented. Motion. Second. 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 Questions? All in favor of it, no matter what time. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Item uh, attachment number eight, uh, item E, is regarding urgent repair. We've been awarded $67,000 from the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency for the urgent repair uh, program. I recommend that you accept the award by approving the grant agreement and project ordinance as presented. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by what time. Aye. Aye. All opposed? And I'll give it approval. Item uh, F is regarding. Uh, Tar River Transit for a Rural Operating Assistance Fund. Um, Edgecombe County is eligible to receive these funds to uh, assist residents with transportation through what's called the Rural Operating Transportation Fund. We partner with Tar River Transit to apply for and administer these funds for us. We will have available a total of $166,284 that should be. And this covers three categories of elderly and disabled transportation assistance employment, transportation assistance, and rural general public assistance. I recommend that you approve the submission of this application to authorize me to execute the enclosed form. Motion. Yes. So this is outside of Medicaid. Medicaid is a separate funding source. Medicaid is goes through the process of scheduling through our, but they are paid directly through the state. This is other rural transportation, and so they have to report on how many uh, resident edge home residents that they transport using these funds. Uh, they have to make sure that the resident is uh, using it for the eligible use, uh, but they report to us, I believe, on a monthly basis how many uh, citizens that they transport. 
item is regarding surplus of uh, vehicle and computer equipment. Uh, you have for your consideration the following vehicle that is listed in the attached list of computers and related equipment that now have exceeded their useful life. I recommend that you approve the surplus of the above vehicle and reference list of computers and related equipment as presented. Second. Second. Question. My question. Who has the $104,000? Uh, it, it, it's one vehicle. It's a four van, a twelve passenger van. It has one hundred four thousand miles. It was a corporate extension. Any other questions? Okay. All those people let me know about both side and I. Aye. All opposed. And uh, next. Uh, next item on your agenda is regarding the twenty twenty two water assistance management Pro, uh, plan. We've received notice from North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality of a grant award for the 22 Water Asset Management Plan. The award, um, which is uh, funded with federal ARPA funds, totals $307,255. The project will locate and survey locations of all water distribution assets not currently mapped, infill inspections of hydrants, storage tanks, booster stations, and chemical feed stations, and create a hydraulic model of the system. Is recommend that you approve the enclosed resolution and accompanying grant project ordinance as presented. Motion. Second. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? All in favor of it, nobody votes on aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion passes. Next. Uh, next item is similar. This is from the same funding source uh, for sewer system study. Uh, again, federal ARPA funds totaling $561,000 to uh, it will locate and survey sanitary sewer smoke testing of various sewer mains, CCTV, uh, closed, closed caption television inspections, along with various uh, inspections and assessments. I recommend that you approve a closed resolution and project ordinance as presented. Motion. Second. Second. Question. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. Uh, next, we have a, uh, a special use permit application uh, received from Barnhill Contracting Company. Um, it, it, will, it is requesting to expand their permitted sand mine off uh, Ellis Lane. A public hearing is required. I recommend that you call for that public hearing at your November meeting. Second. Uh, question. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. aye. All opposed, the public hearing is called. Next. Um, this is regarding the CBG Neighborhood Revitalization Program application that we've talked about a couple of times. Um, as staff continues to work with our consultant to prepare an application for the NC Department of Commerce's Neighborhood Revitalization Program, one critical action is needed from you at this meeting. Uh, just as a reminder, this is a program that can fund various housing. Um, uh, programs uh, and services for from primarily low to moderate income families. Um, we are considering preparing and submitting an application for what we refer to as scattered site housing rehabilitation. In other words, not a group of houses in one place but scattered across the county. Uh, the application must include potential recipients. To select those potential recipients, we must have a housing selection committee with bylaws and guidance, which is included for your consideration. I recommend that you adopt the housing selection 
committee bylaws and guidance. I also recommend that you call for the final public hearing to be held at your November meeting. Motion. Chair Sheffield. Question. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. All opposed? Yeah, no, it's approved. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, like Ms. Braswell. She's still here. The planning board meeting was held on September 18th. And um, the purpose of the meeting, there was a training session conducted by Chad uh, Meadows of Code Work Planners. So no action is needed by the board, more but for your information. Okay, thank you. Council list have releases or approval. Anything to be brought to attention? No, sir. Happy to be answering the questions that you have. You have a motion? Approval. Okay. Questions? All in favor, let me know my vote. Aye. No, sir. You have a list there that requires your approval and one for information. Any questions on the list on the board? I did. Um, the one with the sheriff's Why do we have three yes? Why are we paying? You mean for this for the service? For this living paper that comes back. For child, and this is child support related. Right. Well, then, Ms. Ms. Batham. Okay, so according to the sheriff, <laughs> he has, that's how many deputies it takes to serve the papers. We serve a lot of papers in child support all over the county, out of county. And according to Sheriff um, Atkinson, he, he's, I guess, assigned three deputies to perform that service. See, to me, I, I, I felt like it's a contractor service. Those employees, what the sheriff's department, they don't work for the DOJ. They don't work for the DOJ. So why are we paying salaries under the sheriff's department? Why are we paying the On the and second or third page of the contract, the breakdown of how the money, like what percent, how much is the county, how much is federal, and how much is state. I, I think it's a savings in money the way that it's done. Uh, that's not the previous conversation I've had with somebody. I can't remember who. And I think that what it, what it appears to be is county contract with county services. Now, it looks like we're, we're spending 33% of it, and right. the stress is federal funds. Exactly. Zero state funds. So the exactly. state, the federal government, we get reimbursed for those positions at 66.67%, okay. if that's, that's what you're asking. And that is the reason why we see that contract service, rather than just having deputies assigned to that responsibility from the service department. It's bigger so that we can well benefit from any other source of funding. Okay, now I want you to take a look at um, this page under the service program description. I'm trying to determine if you date a project. What page are you on? Um, page 8 of 30. Look at the effective date, first day of July 2022. That's wrong. And shall continue to June of 23. Yeah. 
that is a typo. That needs to be corrected. That needs to be corrected. It says, let me show y'all the road. 100% of their professional time to the services set forth of this agreement. Okay. We sure that's all they want, all that. We, well, we sure that they submit monthly reports saying that's what they do all day. <laughs> it's about like in, a, in the other comments for you that we don't know what they're doing all well, day. But no, see, I've, I've, I've seen the list before about how many papers went out and how many didn't get served. And you got three full time dentists, not a single paper should get served. Well, sometimes, and I, I'm sure the sheriff will tell you this as well, the papers aren't getting served because the men aren't presenting themselves available. And so, you know, they tell us that they can go to the home and if whoever and answers that, that door. Home, that is true. Yeah. I so, but we still have to pay for them spending the time to serve that paper, even, even though the individual wasn't actually served. So, um, sure he could speak. look out of one of the I know that's one reason on <laughs> yeah, they get paid for the attempt. All right. All right. But just make sure on that page eight before we send anybody else to get that Okay, yes. Is that the only um, is your motion is your motion to approve with the corrected paper? Yes. Okay. Did you get a second on that? I second. Okay. Question. Ten other questions. All in favor, let me know my vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, but you're in none. Next on the part no uh uh there it was uh for for the question. It was the typographical area error where you got no, we can count the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or where we signed. Okay, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, the following reports are uh, anything that we want y'all to do. On behalf of the water and sewer, uh, Mr. Ryan Hill, 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 M
Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to just uh, give you an update on our annual audit process. Um, I'm pleased to announce that we are on track. We're, we're doing really good. We've had two on-site visits already, had a lot of um, good feedback, and we are geared up and looking forward to getting the audit um, completed and submitted by November 30th, which we think is, is a reasonable time frame. And so just wanted to let you know that that process was well underway. And so far, um, everything is, is looking pretty good. So we still have to wait to find out the final results. <coughs> um, absolutely. And that's and that is that is my goal. You can, you can do everything right this year. If you don't get the audit in, everything wrong. I got you. I got you. And that's my sentiments exactly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We we are balancing July and August. We've got them. I think July's balanced, and we're working on August. Yes, ma'am. We are not behind on any bank statements. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. After our, after our public petition, thank you for that good report. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to make, and we're up to date on what we owe to RIS, and we've got that. On the so um, that's a good question. Yes, we are up to date. I will say that they're backlogged, so it takes time for them to go through and update those processes. But we have spoken to the IRS supervisors and agents directly. And we are um, expected as soon as they get all that key in, everything will be where it needs to be. So yes, I could say that we're good with IRS. So, so we can be on time, but we got to wait on them. Uh, actually, yes, yes. <laughs> we can't be late. And we, can't, we, can't be late. <laughs> we can't be late, but they said it was such a backlog and they could not guarantee when it would be done, but that um, basically um, we're not in any kind of enforceable status, and they have what they need. It's just a matter of them getting it all keyed in. Thank you. Uh, next is update regarding tornado debris cleanup and tipping fee waiver. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, you approved at your last meeting, last regular meeting, to accept the $100,000 from the state and appropriate additional fifty. You voted to waive tipping fees uh, for, for vegetative debris cleanup. Um, we have been informed that with the most recently approved state budget, that it includes $300,000 additional funds to come to the county to help us with uh, debris cleanup, not just vegetative debris, but also construction and demolition debris. We have uh, a few properties out in the area that were affected that were either uninsured or underinsured, and, and, and therefore they will need some assistance, not just with removing the vegetative debris, but also with removing some of the construction demolition from houses and other structures that, that were uh, damaged on their property. So we're grateful to have um, $300,000 for that, and, and the Representative Wilmingham is not here, but I know he was very much instrumental in helping us um, with getting that. In fact, his staff reached out to me and asked for some numbers um, on um, the funding that we needed. And, and uh, so we want to thank him and his staff for assisting us with that. So um, um, our staff is uh, meeting, uh, Antoine and his staff meeting with the contractor, the debris cleanup contractor tomorrow morning, I believe it is. And so we should, in the next few days, have a date of when that's going to start. Uh, they will communicate directly with uh, residents who were affected to let them know, you know this is when it will start. Uh, we've already communicated where they need to put debris, but we'll remind them of that just to let them know what to expect from that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So at this point, being that we now, or we expect to get funds from additional funds from the state, to not only help cover that gap that we already knew we were going to have with the vegetative debris cleanup, but also some funds that will allow us to clean up construction and demolition debris for those who are uninsured or underinsured. Um, I recommend that you extend that waiver 
of the tipping fee to include construction and demolition for those that were directly affected by the tornado that are uninsured, underinsured, um, would be my recommendation. I'd like to recommendation is to extend the waiver of tipping fees to include uh, construction and demolition for those uninsured and underinsured. Do I have a motion? Second. Question. I'm in favor of that. I'm on the side. Aye. Aye. All opposed? And I'm against the group. Moving on. Uh, you have in your packet um, a, a new Edgecombe Soil and Water Conservation District newsletter. That's something new that they're doing. And uh, Scott was here earlier. but. Um, or I think they did a really good job with that, and so thank them for it. Yeah, they brought a lot of things that we didn't know about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're very busy. I'll tell you what, they're very busy. Yeah, they're very busy. Thank you. 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 The record just wanted to state in that report this month we had a three percent water loss. Um, three percent. Um, I asked Mike Matthews to give me some context of what that looks like for a system of our size, and he said we should be targeting for 12 to 14 percent. So that's how well that department is really doing. If you really think about actual numbers, not just percentages, I know we can talk about percentages all day. Actual numbers, that means that that department brought us in $85,319.25 in additional revenue just by water loss. So, who's made it? Paul Mosley, who's our utilities director, is here, and I know that there's a lot of sweat and hard work uh, behind uh, bringing those percentages down. I want to say thank you to everybody. Still is, all right. They, they chase after Jason. Were you in the call? I had zero one time, so I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 on day one. Just before you turned it off. No, just, just, just before they gave you the job. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah. Um, under manager's report, you see there have major events and updates. And remind you, this is not an exhaustive list of all the meetings that I may have had or attended, but just some of the major things I want you to be aware of. Have the workforce development indicators, the monthly tourism development authorities, uh, financial report. Um, this is the same report as presented to the tourism development authority. I want you to have a copy of that as well. Um, item D is an update on the FY22 state appropriations grant. As I mentioned a moment ago, one thing I, I forgot to mention in addition to the $300,000, we've been made aware that we're going to receive to help with uh, disaster recovery from the tornado in July. Also in the state budget is $14.2 million to do uh, to increase the sewer capacity at Kingsborough Industrial Park. As you know, for a long time, we've been working very hard to chip away any of those boxes that get presented to us when a client comes and sits down at the table that we can't say yes to. Um, and a lot of work, investment, and thank you all for your uh, commitment and vision and foresight about Kingsborough it started 20 years ago plus. Um, one of the last things that was left hanging out there is we have enough sewer capacity um, to cover usually one of the clients that we talk with. Um, but we don't have enough sewer capacity to cover two or more large clients at Kingsborough. Um, also, we want to make sure that we are able to say to these clients, and, and Mr. Bob Pike is here tonight, we want him and his team, when they're talking with clients, to be able to say, look, we already have funds in hand. And so that was something that we have pushed forward and had a lot of conversation about. So very pleased to see the state recently approved state budget. $14.2 million to, um, to increase our sewer capacity at Kingsborough. It usually takes a couple of two or three months before paperwork comes, so you'll you'll be seeing a grant agreement and such be coming back to you at, uh, at, at some point. But 
with that said, you know that we received some funds last year as well, and Ms. Bess is going to come to give you um, an update on our FY22 appropriation. So the first amount, um, can you all hear me, that we received, we received a million dollars um, in that grant for costs associated with the QVC fire. We have already been reimbursed. Um, we have reimbursed ourselves this amount for the direct cost um, and revenue loss. This was help, has helped to fill the revenue gap created by the QVC fire. Um, the second project under the grant was the $250,000 we received for the QVC Employment Employee Support Program, which we submitted that, um, running, funneling those funds through the United Way, and we reached out to them. They're still working out. They have received the funds, and they're going to get a report to us that we'll update with you at a later time as to who has been um, helped with those, with those funds. The third project in the grant was the Leggett Fire Station to complete the needs assessment and engineering and architectural design for the fire station in the town of Leggett. This is also complete. We've also been told that there's one million in the new state budget for construction, um, and we will use the balance to do the demolition and land prep. Um, this project was for a million dollars. It included the Leggett Fire Station, also includes the evidence processing and storage facility um, for the sheriff's office. That was for $50,000. The needs assessment has been completed on that, and we are seeking funding options for construction on that. The Edgecombe Animal Shelter, we received $775,000. We construction costs of the Edge for the for the construction costs of the Edgecombe County Animal Shelter total estimated cost of $1.5 million. We plan to use those funds for land cleaning, site preparation, and connection to utilities, and we will soon present a funding plan to the Budget Committee for construction of the animal shelter. And then the last um, amount that we received, the $1.5 million of the fourth project in the grant was for the fire and rescue equipment at Kingsboro. Um, we have purchased one truck. We have purchased equipment for the other truck. Um, and also are working to order turnout gear, the second truck, and equipment for the second truck. Are there any questions? Ms. Bates, can you give us that number for the animal shelter one more time? Yes, so we received $775,000 for construction costs of the new Edgecombe County Animal Shelter. The total estimated cost is $1.5 million. Um, which the balance will be matched by the county. I may have made a wrong note. It's actually right now we're estimating four million dollars for for construction of the uh, animal shelter, and so of that, the seven seventy five that we have in hand will go towards construction. We want to use that to get started on land clearing, site preparation, connection of utilities, and those kinds of things. Um, and so then we are looking at. I recommend this be something that board can discuss more, but recommend that that two plus million dollars from Nash County uh, that that we use at least a million dollars of that to go towards construction of the animal shelter, and then the balance of that um, we borrow the that from uh, USDA Rural Development. USDA Rural Development has a community facilities loan program. This would qualify for that. Uh, you can get terms extended 30 years, 20, 20, 20, 20 years, uh, interest rates right at three and a half percent. Debt service would be manageable on that, but you know, we, I would say we discussed that a little bit more. So it's, it's good to know, and for the public that are here that have been interested to hear about our plans for animal shelter, I think we're getting close to um, to moving forward. That I did share. The plans for the building to uh, with the Animal uh, Welfare Advisory Council at the meeting last week. There are a few more I's to dot T's to cross with that, we, you know. But we're, we pretty much know we've got a building now, plan for a building that's going to cost us around four million dollars. Um, that we believe will be a good size to accommodate current needs plus expansion. Also going to be following that, having conversation with the town of Tarboro now that we have a number to see what level of participation they might want to have if they still want to participate. So one point 
allocations, two million dollars more for Lega Fire, not one million in the new budget, but kind of gone through and did. So that would be three million total for the Lega Fire Department through state appropriations. Um, and also, if I could add, my understanding is that that's going to be given directly to Leggett Fire Department, and that comes through us. Yeah. Yeah. I think it has to go to our fund balance, but it goes through. Do they have a timetable on it? When they will begin? Um, I, I think as soon as the money is available, they're they're ready to move. I think they're pretty squared away on their plan for what they want to do. Um, and then just a kind of a clarifying point to what you just were stating, and I went back and pulled the pulled this as well. Um, that we're allocating 1.1 or 1 million of that m money from the sale of the Nash County building for purchasing vehicles that we just he, voted he, on. He, rec he recommended he, that's what he said. He said that's, he what, that's what he recommended. That was, that's what we voted on tonight. Okay, okay. in his least in his proposal and attachment, he said that because of the cost of the compensation pay plan, he doesn't think we can budget it. And now he's asking for money that money to go towards the animal shelter. He said, "Three hours, one million of the two would go to the vehicle." Okay, and so then a million towards the animal shelter, and then we're the the concern is just the budgeting for the compensation plan. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I think my my point was that my recommendation was to use these funds we expect to get from the sale of that building instead of pulling it from fund balance because of the additional cost that the compensation plan has added to us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, update on, a, uh, on the county line merger. Briefly, I'll mention that the uh, Inchcombe School System had uh, the second public meeting last Tuesday at the D.S. Johnson um, Elementary School. I think it was well attended and very good questions were asked and answered, I believe. Um, as, as you all know, I want to make sure the public is aware, we are planning for a joint meeting of the four boards, and those four boards being uh, this board, Board of Commissioners for Nash County, Edgecombe and Nash School Boards. We're planning for that meeting on October the 16th at 7 p.m. at Rocky Mount Event Center. The purpose of that meeting is for all four boards to hear presentation from both superintendents and their staff about their respective size of this transition plan that's being drafted and finalized now. Um, we won't be asking the boards to take any action on that that night because um, we want to make sure that you have plenty of time to ask questions at that meeting. If there are questions that can't be answered, we want to make sure there's adequate time to follow up on that. Um, and, but what we are asking is that each of the four boards then at their regular meeting in November to, um, to adopt a resolution, and Mr. Peters is working with other attorneys involved, to craft a resolution that will all be approving the same resolution. So we'll collectively be approving the, the transition plan. Now, you may decide that after that meeting on the 16th, you might want to have some more discussion. You're certainly welcome to call for a special meeting if you need to outside of your November meeting or before your scheduled November meeting. But right now, the plan is to have that four board joint meeting on October 16th at 7 p.m. at Rocky Mountain Events. So, so they are uh, both school superintendents and their staff are to finish their reports and get them to the managers by the night. I think that's the Monday before. Um, we will package those and get those out to you um, um, as soon as we get them. Where, where, where Rocky Mountain Event Center. Right now we're planning for it to be in the Edgecombe room on the first level, but we'll confirm Well, I, that's up to the boards. I, yeah, I, I think it would based on the ultimate board. And, and, and the problem might be a slight difference between 
what it is going to bring it to the user, but actually it's a plan. It's going to get a plan from school board. That's correct. And, and that is discussing their side of the transition. So the conveyance of property from that school, the acceptance of property from that kind of thing. So it would be from their respective side of the transition. Will that include the budget amount for that for that conveyance? Are we asking for I'm sure Nash County's gonna ask us for money. Nash County asking us for money. Yeah, so it will include the request the for yeah, our, our continued support of the students that will remain in their school system. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, but there's no, we wouldn't have to pay for the property that's in those schools that's not in those schools. No, sir. That's already been paid. Well, I will say there's some, uh, there's some discussion about property that was acquired through federal funds. It has been brought up in our planning meeting, planning committee meetings that there seems to be an understanding that uh, rules, federal rules that come with those funds that any property that's acquired that they can't be given, they have to be sold based on the depreciated value of the property at the time. Um, I think, um, I don't want to speak for all the boys, I think most of the people in the room understands that those funds or that, that equipment and what have you in those schools was sent to Nash County School System for the benefit of those students, who then will become educational students. So I think in principle, it makes <coughs> sense to, for those those uh, items that were acquired for their benefit to follow those students. Um, now, they are discussing that. Can they do that? What, you know, what possibility they have with that? I know Edgecombe school system folks were scheduling a meeting, I think they were having last week maybe with the state with uh, folks from the Department of Public Instruction to hopefully get some guidance on that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it disappear, but I'm not sure right now in terms of uh, our position has been that we want to open up the fact that only the property office should right. because we don't know what the answer is. They're out of school. If we just take that out of school, so, you're saying there's a question yeah, not not the buildings. They get federal funds. Most of it is what's called mm -hmm. Title Title One funds, right, right. and they buy computers, desks, other things. You know, they other have, they have, they have the inventory of everything. And that's that's my question was: Are we going to have to pay for that personal property? If we're going to insure personal property versus property, mm -hmm. they might ask for. Well, I, I would say that, that, that it's all of the reasons that's been supportive of, of what decision that, what, what the final decision that we did. So I, 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 it, it's very promising uh, that it, there's been some discussions that, that, um, that you know, we're probably going to be able to do that. It's really a number of talks. We're talking about talk about
finish with the same where we are and, and, and how we got to the same point. We couldn't be going here because it might not. Uh, we're not ready. But we, we think we're going to be there by October 16th. Uh, well, they might have some other answers for us that we have in terms of some of those that they were with some of those uh, last week that we have not had the benefit of those discussions with the county yet. Um, Sorry, I was just clarifying. To, that we, we are expecting, we think that we will get those, all those clarifications. Well, we know we've got, well, we're, uh, I'm saying that we, we, if the state gives it to us, okay, they've had several appointments with the state that it's changing. I would say it's not because of what our local folks have been doing to get those answers, okay? I think some of the questions that they asked, uh, uh, the state had to find themselves, okay, to turn to the So they are doing some research on that. That's where I think we are. My reference guide is not being okay. And we, they've been having, even at, um, in, at the, 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 our county has done, Somewhat of a slight change in our application process to accommodate any of those um, staff that might want to stay where they are. Okay. But you know, it might not be enough vacancies in that kind of all of them. And some of them want to stay anyway. They don't want to stay where they are. Any yeah. other questions that might come to your mind about those two? that we have at West Street. But I would say, based on our staff, that we can clarify it. When we get to those legal issues and all this, we'll be able to. Do you believe it's in that report, uh, chapters that we part next week? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they have already identified how many teachers will be affected, how many they need. Right. As Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman said that They've, uh, ex they now have an expedited application process, so for those who are interested can more quickly go through that, that process um, for our school system. Another question? Um, I'll mention we had uh, some discussion at the last meeting about um, now that the sheriff does not house federal inmates, the budgetary impact that that might um, have on us. Um, and for the sake of time, I won't walk through this spreadsheet. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, but obviously it presents some financial impact. Um, I provide the sheriff sent a letter today. You have a copy. I sent it earlier, and you have a copy um, at at your seat. Um, you know, I think you know. He in his letter, he's he's saying that the reason was because of being short staffed, need to be able to have enough uh, adequate, well trained staff to be able to handle our local um, detainees, as, and, and then which is our primary response, his primary responsibility. And so he talks about his staffing issue, and now he mentions near the end of his letter that he is hopeful that the new compensation plan will help to fill. Uh, some of those vacancies. Uh, I would suggest that at this moment, we just, we need to be aware of this. We need to continue to look at this, have conversation about this. Um, I think we will need to at some point make some budgetary changes because right now, you know, depending on how long we don't have and when they may or may not come back, um, we're budgeting right now $1.3 million um, that we, won't see that full amount for this fiscal year. I don't see that you need to make any decisions about this tonight just to be aware of this. Uh, we'll continue to have conversation with the sheriff and see where things go um, and then bring this back for future discussion. Um, also, you'll remember that in, in your approval of our uh, FY24 budget, we included funds for umbrella of programs we're referring to as Edgecombe Works. One of those three new initiatives is what we're calling the Edgecombe Works Promise Program. This is the program that is a scholarship program that is um, that is managed by Edgecombe Community College alongside the other scholarship, scholarship programs. Our priorities uh, for this are um, all have to be Edgecombe County residents, unemployed or underemployed, um, 
high school, recent high school graduates or county employees. So we budget $75,000 in this line for the community college to, to manage for us. You'll see that for certain certificate programs, they can get up to $500 per semester. Um, for other programs, long term, more longer term credential programs, up to $1,000 per student. The purpose of this is not only to pay for tuition books and fees, but also to help cover some of those other costs as it relates to being able to attend and successfully complete school. You remember we brought this to your attention. We saw it as a need because, as Dr. McLeod described to us, there are many students that they may even get, say, Pale Green or something else, but there's still some funding financial gap there. We want to help cover those gaps. We want to help our residents to be able to get um, credentialing, training that they need. You know, the gentleman from um, My Future NC talked about that statewide initiative, our goal to get more credentials in the hands of our of our citizens, and that certainly will help with that. So I want to say uh, thank you to Dr. McLeod and his staff for basically taking the vision of this and, and putting um, meat to it. Um, this is now uh, on the community college's website. I included a printout of their webpage. If you know someone who may fall into one of those categories, may be interested in this, um, they can go to the community college's website and see information on who they are, uh, who, who they should call about that. We'll have more information coming soon about the other two initiatives under that Edge Cone Works um, program. So I think that's a great thing. It's a new program for us, and it's a great thing for the county and, and making available for our citizens. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, I'm really for this Edge Cone Works, but when we say county employees, they're already employed. That's why we were going after people who were not employed. Well, they could be underemployed. For example, you may have someone that's in a I'm just um, maybe dangerous. But let's just say we have a custodian who has aspirations for a better paying job um, for you know for for their family. They could possibly get some training and credentialing to help them to get a better job. Uh, we have training specific to a position. We also have some education on the centers where if you get an associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, you get a one-time bonus for that. But we have nothing in place where we pay for somebody to get training that's outside of what they currently do. Can I break question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, the last thing, Mr. Chairman, if I could, it's not on the agenda for manager report, but I do want to let you know um, we have uh, a firm that is interested in uh, constructing, leasing from the county property that we own, and uh, constructing a communications tower. Uh, they're interested in property that we own, uh, and I have a map at, at your place. It is uh, at near Kingsborough Industrial Park. It is just south of uh, QDC facility. You'll see there, it's, uh, it's separate from your agenda packet. I think it's what it is there. Uh, yep, that's it right there. Yes, sir. And so it is just south of QBC facility. It's on a parcel that we own. It's right next to the water tank that we have there at Kingsboro. And so they want to offer um, $850 lease per month for a 10 year contract. Uh, we're considering in that contract the option to renew three successive times at five years each. However, before you can consider to vote on this, um, statutes require that a 30-day notice be published. And so unless you as a board are totally against this, I recommend that you at least allow uh, staff to post this notice. We can bring this back to you at your uh, November meeting for your consideration if possible. Not no, sir. It's a small little sliver there. That, that, that map might be a little small to see it. It's a small little sliver. Okay, we'll post that notice and bring it back to you. Okay. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. If you remember uh, last last month, we were sitting here about the same time. I know y'all were 
uh, hold it till next time. We have a four yard, ten minutes past yeah. ten. And uh, <clears throat> that's the real thing I want to bring it up first. Is it's ten minutes past ten. We have two two um, female commissioners. Who I love. We got six other additional females sitting here. It's ten minutes past ten. They don't need to be getting on the highway at ten minutes past ten. They need to be walking out of this building. Uh, my proposal would be, and I don't mean to spring on anybody, we'll talk about it later, but I think the staff, they're already here. I think our meeting time needs to be 6 o'clock. Uh, it seems like the agenda for each meeting continues to grow and grow and grow, and uh, I, I just think it would be great if we met at 6 o'clock rather than 7, if we're going to continue to be here. I mean, we, we it's not fair to Mr. Pike, it's not fair to George, it's not fair to these ladies to be sitting here this time. Not fair. Well, you know, you're exactly right. And, uh, and I, I mean, I don't want to rock my buddy's boat. If everybody wants to stay here and meet at 7 o'clock, I'll be with you here in the morning at breakfast at 6. But uh, our, our, our news person here, Mr. Walker, if, if we could meet at 6, I think it would be advantageous to all of us. I mean, it's time for me to be in here in a little while. And, we we have had supper yet, and we got a new a, 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 a guy over here that's going to be a new father. And I can tell you, his wife's going to be all over his book if he's at home by this time in the next few months. Any thoughts on anybody else? I don't think we've had a meeting in before ten. <laughs> Well, we, we've had, yeah, we used to. you know, all, 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 you know, the, the other options could be, you know, what is this deal once on the floor, which is we'll take care of all of the business of the county. There's one reason. Some board school, I have, uh, I'm prepared to, I'm prepared to, whatever board discusses my bid for three commissions would have that issue with me. Anybody else mentioned? Before we have a picture. Honestly, it is a, it's something that exactly that we got to. Is, is it something that we have to take over? We, we do East December, and this is correct. I believe East December, we set the schedule for the full year, so that may be an opportunity. To, okay. Well, it, yeah, my suggestion is there appears to be no opposition at all. Do some of these, we set next year's schedule, we set it for next year's schedule. Is that better? Hearing none, it appears that we're on board. That would change when we try to do something. Any objections to all right there? Yeah, I'll find out. One other thing. Uh, back in August, we had a fire down, uh, I guess you could say, uh, my way. And, and even though I'm in the uh, Macclesfield Fire District, the call that I got from a concerned citizen was uh, they were in the uh, South Hedgecomb Fire District. Uh, it was on a Friday evening, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I am. Uh, the couple was uh, boiling peanuts in an outside 20-pound uh, cylinder was firing everything up. Of all things, they had an underground 500-gallon uh, tank that decided to spring a leak. The tank, not not the copper beauty, but the tank itself. And so fire was springing up all over the yard and getting ignited. And uh, the, the issue I want to bring up, and I brought this issue to Mr. Evans, and uh, we got a response from Mr. Brown. And, and the response was fine, but his response is what has spurred me to bring this before you, and I was going to ask some questions of here. Uh, the, the real issue that happened was uh, the, the home is in the South Edgecombe Fire District, and the South Edgecombe Fire District firemen, three showed up uh, on the personal vehicles. And after the fire was basically out, I think South Edgecombe finally did send a tanker after the fire was out. So Macclesfield responds to the fire. South Edgecombe does not. And the person in the South Edgecombe did. So you know what the comment was. My money's going, if, if Macclesfield's going to be the one responding, don't get me wrong. He, he, he was very nice, very nice gentleman. He's, he's just thinking, okay, why did, why did Macclesfield come? What happened to the South Edgecombe issue? And then of all things, the backup that came and backed everybody up was Bakertown Fire Department out of Wilson. I mean, I'm sitting here saying, as a board of commissioners or whatever manager, we need to send the Baker, we need to send Bakertown some money. 
I mean, south, south, wet, south end come finally sent the truck with some water in it after the fire is out. The Baker Town had to respond and back up Macclesfield because they were the primary sponsor. Okay. Why didn't he jump south end come from? You tell me. Well, his response was, again, this is it, and I'll come back. I'll try to. Get him in. No. Uh, Mr. Brown's response mentioned the fact that the volunteer fire firemen in all of our areas now is no longer what it used to be years ago. Years ago, everybody wanted to be a volunteer fireman. Now you can't find them. My question is in regards to safety, as has it dropped to such a low number of people wanting to get involved? We'd like South East Coast Fire Department, Mexico, or, or have we got an issue there? That's my question. Do we truly have an issue from the standpoint that we don't have enough volunteer firemen that we have a need to be very concerned in Edgecombe County at this point in time? I mean, that, that just makes no sense to me. If we either need to change this gentleman. We talked about school districts. Well, what do we need to change fire districts? Well, when you got a problem with the law, we want to volunteer fire department. Volunteer number one, number two. Most of them now are employed. What's that? Yeah. At least two people to respond to a truck. And if that's what it needs to do, then that's what it needs to do. Yeah. I mean, we're full of them. Yeah. Y'all have mutual aid agreements, which I'm totally confused about. That didn't hold out mutual aid for Edge Home County Fire Department with other folks that didn't support. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the, you got a few issues there, and, and I'm not upset with uh, Mr. Brown's response to me, but he still leaves me hanging with lots of questions. Yeah. I mean, right. if Baker Town backs them up and, and brings a, a fire truck with their individuals there to fight the fire, I mean, he sent a, a really nice letter in regards to why they had to let the fire, you know, kind of go out on its own rather than start spraying and understand that. I mean, you know. But I think we can attempt to address some of those issues by what we have planned to do in the King's Road. That's what we've been talking about. Us having a fire department, a central location where we that we would stay. Uh, and we also have an issue in terms of how we build up Counterbase to be able to back up some of these volunteer fire problems. And for some time, I think we've been having some of those issues as they relate to the bad weather. And if we're not getting the response from the volunteers that we need to, sometimes they're, they're not. I don't think this is the only case. It might be the only case that you know about. You're right. As it relates to that. But I, but I think that we have, we have been talking about how we address that issue probably. On Kingsborough side, in terms of what we need to find there, that can help us be off the counter to get a response, or with a backup response, um, that we be able to uh, assist all of those efforts and make them more reliable. I, I think it is a continual conversation yes. that we need to have aboard, and how we address it. And um, uh, from what I've heard from some of the previous stuff, I think we can do pretty well. Yeah, well, I, I will admit it was a crack, but. You know, before I say I admit it was a Friday night, and a lot of you know, there if you want to hide anything, you can hide it in stone because everybody goes out to eat on Friday night. You know, nine out of ten, and uh, you know, so that could have been one of the problems. But you know, the deal is, you, you don't know when you're gonna have a fire. You know, it's gonna be on a Friday night or a Monday night, and we just need to, if the citizens need to be alerted to the fact that. We got a problem, then we need to do something. Sure, we're certain we'll, we'll follow up with that situation specifically, the broader issue more generally, um, and, and bring something back to the board for you on this. Well, I think we need to look into that because there was something that arrived there on this road with the lady. And then somebody did. The, the, the property owner that contacted me is, a, you know, he served on the fire department, he served on various boards in the county. He was one of the gentlemen, and he didn't, you know, he didn't attack me, he attacked us. Very, very nice. As this young lady presented before us tonight, I, I just want to give her a hug her neck and say thank you. Young lady, we're talking about school.
school representation. For the first time, somebody came to us tonight in a gentle manner and requested something. I wanted to kiss them. <laughs> no, it wasn't with Brian, but the lady on the third row, right back there. Okay, I'm a lady. From Rocky Mountain. Oh, yeah. Bless her. Bless, Bless her right. for not chastising us and knowing how to ask. You attract a lot more flies with sugar than you do with that. That's my spill for the night. <laughs> Yeah, most spills from any other commentator. <laughs> this will be my last comment about cars for the night. How about that? Um, I would like to to ask the manager to go ahead and appropriate the funds, the one point one two five million from the fund balance. While because we heard from Enterprise tonight, it doesn't solve the sheriff's issue. So now that we, I can concede that we're going to purchase the cars. Enterprise told us tonight it could take six months to find a car. So then we have three or four months of negotiating with Nash County to try and get the money for it. We have the fund balance here. Let's empower our sheriff to go find the cars now. We have the ability to let him do that. And then we'll figure out budget amendments to get it back into the necessary months we have the money from Nash County. Well, I thought you were already talking about the motion. Right. We did not make that motion. We made the motion to do it after he received the funds well, we from Nash County. That was not well, that was his recommendation. Well, the motion says, uh, the motion says, uh, the motion says, the county manager to proceed with the purchase of 20 vehicles for the Okay. Well, I just, I'm glad I clarified that, then, because I was under the impression that we were, it, we were it, using it, the Nash it, County. It, it specifically stated the amount that you stated. But it empowers the manager to move forward. Yeah, what the motion says. You, you might have that yeah. yeah. I, 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 that was not the way I interpreted the motion. I interpreted the motion that I, we that I, we wrote that we accepted the manager's recommendation to wait for the funds from National Council. Yeah, the motion wow. says that about wait. Motion, That's what his proposal says. That's the motion what his was, says. But the motion was stated. I read I read the motion I read his recommendation. And his recommendation again was what it was. Recommend to proceed to the motion authorizing man to proceed with the purchase of 20 billion for the sheriff's office within his time frame based on where he decides the funds come from. Yeah, and that's what I want to clarify. I would like for that time frame to be moved up to now. Well, uh, you, you lost that motion. Right? So we already approved that unless we, we took, we're talking about who's on what we've done. No, I'm just saying, I, I guess it would be a separate motion to say that we don't, it's not contingent on the sale of the building for Nash County. It's contingent on us just authorizing him well, to spend the money. You know, it's, it's up to the board, but that would be uh, pretty much on the lines of what we want to do. Is it okay that, that, that the, for the board to say that there's a consensus, everybody agrees, the understanding of the motion that was passed? Be to be for me to proceed now, not for right. right. yes, I would have no yeah. objection to it, yeah. and that would be the The means I was explaining that was the intent of it that you could proceed to buy cars now. Proceed to do that, but it was, it was, it was, it was just given to us without putting the targets in there or putting a time frame where it was moving any closer to do that. I'll let you know what we'll do is we know the car, the vehicles the sheriff wants. We will proceed with the legwork that we have to do to identify, get quotes, those kinds of things. We will bring back to you at your November meeting a budget amendment to appropriate that from fund balance. But in the meantime, we can start the procurement process. I'm going to go through the not what was proposed. Yes, sir. Anything else? Anything from the attorney? No, sir. You're not in the motion for the closed session. Thank you, Mr. Officer. All those that left the door by the both side of the aisle, all opposed, bring it to the middle of the business.